All right, good evening everyone and welcome to our broadcast from King George High School. This is our pregame show for tonight's football game between the visiting Cyclones and the homestanding Foxes of King George. I'm Mark O'Connell, joining our pregame man in the middle, Eastern View head coach Brian Lowry, and on his left, Chris Frazier filling in tonight for the second time this season yes, for the, the uh, vacationing Steve Peacock. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thank it's you. a great place to be. It is. A beautiful field, beautiful area. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic night. And not as cold as last week. I'm happy about that. Yeah, not as cold as it was down in Carolina. Uh, we weren't down in Carolina. We were. But anyway, this field feels good on my feet. Yeah. Why? It's just quality turf. You know, uh, I think it's a newer set of turf. It's only my second year here, so I don't know how old it is. But of the turf I've been on, this is really good quality stuff. I think one of the last times we were here, we had a playoff game between Eastern View and King George. It's a good place to call a game from our vantage point. But the more important thing is to talk about what is the status of your Cyclones. Now, you guys have a good record, but isn't it true that this is a game that we've all been anticipating? Oh, sure, sure. I mean, like the, you got to beat the best if you want to be at the top. Right, and King George's two-time district champion. Goal is to, you know, dethrone them and take our, our turn, if you will. Uh, you know, we haven't had it circled by any means because I believe that the whole year is a journey and each week is its own week. Each week is its own journey and event, right? But of course, this has been in the background. Right, I'll turn you over to my partner. I'm sure he's got some questions for you as well. Uh, good to see you, Coach. Last you. time I was here at Eastern View, we talked about the, the message for the team and it was weather in the storm. Yeah. What's kind of the message for the team tonight? Really, uh, what we've been talking about all week is David and Goliath, but not so much the they're really good and we don't have a chance to beat them because if you, if you look at David and Goliath, not to bring religion into all that, but the whole story is about how the vast majority of people thought there was no chance. David walked in there believing in his preparation, trusting himself and what he's done up to that point, and that's been the message. Right. Well, the other thing I wanted to ask you, you know, we talk about matchups. Even the average viewer would know, if you've followed it at all, right. that King George has a couple of really top-notch receivers. Certainly. Certainly. Division one player is going to be. They've got height. They've got athleticism. Yeah. They've got all the tools. Does it put the pressure on your secondary, as we would assume that it does? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think the, the only mistake is that everybody thinks you have to lock them down and you have to cover them. Right. You're not going to cover them for, for that long. You have to cover them long enough. <laughs> And there's a difference there, right? We gotta be able to get pressure on the quarterback, which mm -hmm. we believe our, our D-line and linebackers are, are pretty talented, so we're excited about our, our opportunities there. And that was one of the things that uh, I talked about uh, to someone today. I said, you know, you can have fine receivers and they're gonna hurt you as long as the quarterback can get the ball to them. Sure. But the quarterback doesn't really get the ball to them if he's got defenders in his face. Sure. Brett Clatterball, Braden Walker come to mind as a couple of guys who've really applied a lot of interior pressure for you. Do you agree with that assessment? Oh, uh, for sure, for sure. I think those are two guys that anybody would love to have, and we're happy they're on our team. But if you're talking about tonight's keys uh, for success, Coach, from your perspective for Eastern View, what are the few uh, key takeaways we need uh, to ensure a Cyclone victory here tonight? Don't try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them on deep balls. Don't be trying to go for big plays constantly. Play your game. Talk about getting Dave and Goliath. Believe in your preparation, what's gotten you here, and just keep doing that. Play sharp. Play a little bit sharp, but don't get me wrong, it's a huge game, and we all know it. But don't try and be something you're not. Be right. who you are. And then there's such a uh, value to the psychological opponent. What person in any sport ever wins if he or she doesn't believe right. you can win? Right. What would you even bother to show up if you don't think Exactly, that? exactly. And I think there are a lot of people uh, outside of our locker room who think, you know, we might not even want to be here. No, yeah. we're here. We're going to play the game just like them. Coach, I think you're a great guy, and I hope you prove him wrong. Thank you. I do, too. All right. All right, guys, have a great night. Great to see you. Good to see you. Well, Coach uh, and Chris, what do you think about catching up with Coach Lowry? I always enjoy it. I think he's got a, a very fresh and uh, enthusiastic perspective on high school football. Absolutely. He's got a great mindset, and he's prepared his guys the right way. Have the right mindset. Know that you're here for a reason, and they seem motivated. You can probably hear them on the broadcast. I mean, they're ready to go. Yeah. Are you looking forward to calling tonight's game? I think it'll be a great time. You know, we've talked about it, and coaches always say, well, no, we don't look ahead. We can't be, and I get that. But well, everybody knew it, the litmus test for both teams in the Battlefield District, how do you do against each other? Right, and you know what's on the schedule, and you compare those whether you want to or yeah. not, but tonight you put it to the test. Exactly. Well, I think we're expecting a pretty good game. Uh, tonight it's the uh, Eastern View Cyclones playing here at King George, home of the Foxes. And again, as Coach Lowry has said, King George has had some success with these in recent years with these battlefield district titles. They'll have their hands full, but I got a feeling that 
King George may have its hands full too. We'll find out. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have team captains meeting in the center of the field for tonight's coin toss. Stay tuned and keep it right here. You're watching Cyclones Football on the Culpeper Media Network. This broadcast is brought to you by the following community sponsors. Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. Battlefield Automotive, willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book Fair Trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. Battlefield Automotive, 547-3673. CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. Hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center, 825-2200. Found and Sons, more than a respected funeral home, they support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Found and Sons, 825-3530. From shirts to banners and everything in between. Imprint your message on the community with cash imprints 317 1473. KM Lawn Garden and Arborist Supply, now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. KM, from grass to trees, they aim to please. 825 8371. And good evening, football fans from King George High School, where tonight we have a key matchup between the Eastern View Cyclones and the homestanding King George Foxes. Right now, you're looking at team captains from both teams and the coin toss. And I believe King George may have uh, won it, but regardless, I'm Mark O'Connell alongside Chris Frazier in tonight for Steve Peacock and Johnny Krawchuk up top behind the camera, and Nicole Wooten back in the studio of the Culper Media Network. So, welcome aboard. Eastern View has won the toss and has opted to defer, which means they'll be kicking off to start things here tonight, Chris Frazier. And so, welcome aboard, and I'm glad you're able to fill in for Steve Peacock. You've, this is your second uh, flight with us this season, so it's good to see you. Second time with you guys. Can't wait to see this matchup tonight. Should be a great one between the Cyclones and the Foxes. And I wanted to say that, you know, uh, this game is not a winner-take-all situation, but I don't think there's any question that it's a pivotal game and that the winner would have an inside track on that Battlefield District title and a, uh, a good seeding when the postseason starts. Definitely a big matchup in the Battlefield District here between two teams that are undefeated in district. East Review has that one loss to Brook Point, but... The Foxes so far, 6-0, uh, and oh, and the Cyclones at 7-1. and one. But like you said, a big big marquee matchup tonight. So Cyclones 7-1, and one, their only loss to Brook Point earlier in the year. And tonight, uh, a win over King George would, would be a real boost for this team. And as uh, Coach uh, Brian Lowry said in our pregame, he uh, sort of senses that people haven't really given them a, a much of a chance here tonight. But you know what? A big part of that psychological, you show up with the idea, you, you know, that you, you can win and you certainly are prepared during the week. I'm, I'm sure Coach Lowry and his staff have him coached up. And I think it should be a close competitive game, but anything can happen, obviously. Well, Braden Capolini has teed it up for the Cyclones and they'll be kicking off to start things. Here is his kick. We are underway, end over end. This one going to be received near the 15-yard line, coming near side across the 20. 25, penalty flag down as it looked like it was Roger Walker, the return man for King George. And on the opening play, Chris, we already have a penalty flag. Looks like we're going to get, looks like holding there on the return. It looked like on the Foxes, but it seems like all kickoffs and punts now, something goes haywire for the receiving yeah, team. You can just about, just about anticipate uh, we're going to see some yellow laundry on the field. And why is that? Is it? Just because it's so easy to make a be in position where you you you're, you make a bad block or you're uh, desperate not not to let your teammate uh, get tackled or you miss your assignment. Nobody wants to miss their assignment, obviously. Right, and uh, I think we get the push. In the, yeah, we push in the back here on the first uh, play, and I think the teams are just trying to set the tone. I mean, you saw Rajat Walker take it there at the ten, bring it up to about the twenty-two, and uh, get that flag, push him back. But I think the teams just want to set the tone there. 
King George will go on offense here as we start things here at uh, King George High School. Zach Ferguson is the quarterback. He runs to his left. He gets away from Braden Walker, but he does not get away from Eastern View's number 21. That is Jason Spencer making the tackle for the Cyclones. Not many times you're going to say somebody gets away from Braden Walker, but Jason Spencer there to clean it up and get him for a one-yard loss. Sure did, and it'll bring up second down and 11 now for the Foxes. And, uh, you know, we talked about them, and everyone who follows high school football locally, uh, when you think about King George, Chris, you usually start with their two very talented receivers. Uh, Coach Lowry knows it, and it'll be interesting to see uh, what uh, level of pressure they could put on this King George quarterback. Yeah, Powell, Thompson, and uh, White. We'll see uh, how, how much they're involved here in the opening series. All right, here is second down 11 for the Foxes from their own 14-yard line. And a whistle and stoppage here. And we're going to have a delay of game against King George. That'll push them back five yards, and we'll make it second down and 16 from the nine. Well, we're live, of course, and uh, our live uh, sponsor is, uh, of course, uh, Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. All right, after that five-yard penalty, the Foxes are looking at second and 16. From the nine-yard line. Here is Zach Ferguson, his first throw of the game. And he threw it in the double coverage and no penalty there as the intended receiver uh, for King George was number 13. That's uh, Mauricio Blanco. Yeah, the Cyclones dropped both those safeties back there and were able to get on that coverage there. It's also great individual coverage there by Jason Spencer again. We've already called his name a couple times tonight. Put the Foxes into uh, third and long. Yeah, third and 16 to be exact. And so... Chris, I mean, if you're the Eastern View defense, this is an ideal situation where you have forced your opponent into a third and 16 uh, deep in their own territory at the nine-yard line, right where your defense really would like to be. But let's see what King George has in, uh, in stall for them. Long throw downfield. Watch out. This one just overthrown. A diving chance. Wiggins could not make the catch. Well, that Ferguson really aired it out there, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. That's a... That's a heck of a throw there by Ferguson and just a little bit too far for Wiggins. Looked like he was going to come under it there, but the Cyclones, uh, like Coach Lowry said, the bend and don't break. You're not going to stop these guys completely. You've just got to get in front of them and keep them in front of you uh, to limit limit those opportunities for them on the deep balls. Exactly. Well, on fourth and 16, Max Lipinski is the team's punter and kicker. And he's going to stand about uh, three yards deep into his own end zone to kick this one away. So, obviously, barring a miscue, the Cyclones are pretty much guaranteed excellent field position. Here's Lipinski's kick. It's a short one. This one it hits a Cyclone player. It is fielded by King George's Xavier Thompson. And there's the first turnover of the game. When that ball struck the uh, Cyclone return man, it bounced King George's way, Chris. Yeah, and just as you're trying to get the Cyclones off, or Cyclones are trying to get off the field there defensively, just a tough break on a bouncing ball there on the punt, and I, I don't think that you can advance it on the punt here, so that ball might be coming back towards midfield. Mm -hmm. I think you're probably right. Let's, let's check the call here. Regardless, it's a turnover by the Cyclones, and then, you know, this muff punt will give the uh, Foxes uh, an early opportunity here with 10.02 to play in the first quarter. So we, we haven't seen Eastern View's offense yet. We're going to see the King George offense with its second series coming up right here. And they're going to start it at the Eastern View 35-yard line. Yeah, it looks like they can advance the punt there. So, uh, they, I mean, that, and that popped right into the hands of the King George coverage there, and they were able to advance it right into Cyclones territory. Back to that uh, lucky bounce of the ball. It certainly uh, went uh, in King George's favor that time. So like we said, an early opportunity for the Foxes. Now we're gonna, they're pushing this one back for a reason, I'm not sure yet why. 
I so said you cannot you cannot advance it. We were we were right. Uh, so it's so it's right there at the 40 yard line where it was originally touched. Yeah. Thanks for the we, but you were right, Chris. I was watching to see what they were gonna. You you were you had it uh, pegged from the beginning. Uh, east. So rather than being at the Eastern View 35, King George will actually take over on its own 39. And they go to the run here. A little bit of opening there as uh, Aiden Wolfolk was a ball carrier for King George. And he got out uh, close to first down yardage. Had to get to the 49. Looks like he got him up, uh, get enough to move the sticks. And he did. Yeah, 10 yard rush down first down. If the Cyclones can can uh, limit those big plays again, just stop the run there, they'll be able to get back on offense here. But good start for the Foxes here on the uh, extra possession. This broadcast brought to you in part by Fountain Sons, which is more than a respected funeral home. They support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Fountain Sons, 825-3530. First and 10 Foxes from midfield. Scoreless first quarter so far. Zach Ferguson, quarterback keeper. And he runs into, I believe it was uh, Eastern View's uh, Xavier Carr there, Chris, for the tackle. Looked like Xavier Carr out there as well as Isomato. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ferguson picked up uh, five yards. It'll bring up second and five from the, the Eastern View 45. 8.50 to play here in the first quarter. No score, no score so far. This is, uh, we have pointed out, have not seen Eastern View's offense yet. This is uh, King George's second look on offense. King George still running that one receiver back, or uh, one running back there with the three receivers out of that shotgun set like they've been running the whole time. Here is Ferguson. He's got time. He's airing it out. Long incomplete. The pass intended for Makai White. Who did you pick up on the coverage there, Chris, I if you can see it? Again, the Isom Addo. Great coverage there. Got his hands up that he wasn't fouling mm -hmm. or anything. We always see in the NFL games, the, the DPI down the field. Yeah. And uh, Addo did a great job there getting his hands up, not into the receiver, no grabbing of the jersey or anything like that. Great coverage. Well, no surprise that Zach Ferguson, this Fox's quarterback, going to be testing that Eastern View secondary with the receivers this team has. Now they go back to the run, and the running back here, Wolf, uh, pretty hard running. I think second effort's going to bring him just about a yard or two shy of a first down. Yeah, we've got referee here on the near sideline, and then we got a flag down in the secondary. Didn't see what was going on there, but. Yeah, and I don't think, it, did, it didn't look, it look like he had enough for a first down, but now we've got the penalties to, uh, to deal with here, and we'll see what the. Official in the white hat officially has to say when they sort it out. So you said you saw two flags, right? One in the secondary? Yeah, right in here. And it looks like he was talking to the King George coach. It made the motion of somebody throwing a player down. Didn't see who it was, but could have been. Uh, number one was over there. That's uh, Chance Wiggins, as well as the Cyclones uh, secondary. And it looks like King George is backing up. So. Yeah, this one. Obviously working against King George. And this is a 10-yard penalty. Looks like it'll be in a little repeat third down. But now they've got to get, now it's rather than second and five, it is third down and 13. So it's back at the East uh, King George's 47-yard uh, line. Cyclones here getting another third and long. See if they can stop the Foxes again. Exactly right. The first possession, they had him on third and 16. They were able to stop him. Zach Ferguson is throwing out there. He's got a receiver. Excellent coverage by the Cyclones. And that was uh, number 18, uh, Aiden Grimsley, was it not? Yeah, Aiden Grimsley. I mean, Wiggins goes in motion there. They try to get the quick out into the flat there. And mm -hmm. Grimsley just read it the entire way and made a great stop because Wiggins had room out in front if he was able to break that tackle. Early reports or preliminary reports, Chris, if you're looking at that Eastern View secondary, I know it's awfully early, 
but they're showing some good signs out there. They're running with them. They're running with them, keeping with them on the on the motion, the vertical threats downfield. And Ferguson is putting the ball out there. The Cyclones, like you said, are just doing a good job covering it up right now. So from the 48-yard line now, Max Lipinski, Ooh. here comes the pressure. He's going to keep it and run and kick it, and he gets the uh, kick off in good fashion. We'll check this. Well, the roll, they're going to down it inside the Cyclone 25-yard line. So with 6.56 to play in the first quarter, the two teams come back out uh, with their offensive and defensive units. We'll see Eastern View for the first time tonight on offense. Yeah, and uh, Lipinski there had to kind of tuck it down and run with that Aussie-style kick because Deuce Washington was coming down the barrel there about to block that kick and talk about a momentum swing. That would have been huge for the Cyclones. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Eastern View on offense, DeMaio Hunter, the quarterback. He's got an empty backfield there, and he's got three receivers, one in motion now. That was Darius Stafford. The quick throw to start. We got a penalty flag. This one was intended for uh, Xavier Carr, but I think this is going to cost the Cyclones five yards, Chris. Yeah, I think Elijah Golden. Not that I think it was. Oh, illegal shift. Illegal shift. So right. it looks like Elijah Golden got a got a tip on that uh, on that intended pass as well. But the Cyclones look like they're trying to get get athletes in space there, get their get their playmakers out on the outside and see if they can test that uh, Fox's secondary. Yeah, definitely. Well, clock stop, 6.56 to play. First quarter action, no score. Five-yard penalty just assessed against the Cyclones. So now they'll have it first and 15 from the 17-yard line. And last week during Spotsylvania, you saw Trayvon Brock and Hunter kind of develop that rapport they had again, get that going again, see if we can see that tonight for the Cyclones. Here's a snap to DeMaio Hunter. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, runs away from it. Now he's across the 25, makes a move. Tripped up at the 30, and he'll be just uh, a little bit shy of a Cyclone first down, but uh, a very magical situation for Eastern View coming up here. Yeah, and that looked to, like to be a quarterback draw all the way. You had two guys coming out in front of him there, Brett Clatterball leading the way as well, and Tamayo did a good job picking up eight there. Brings up uh, about second and two now for the Cyclones from their own 31-yard line. Tamayo Hunter back there in the gun. All by himself. Looking downfield, assessing. Now running away from the pressure. Throws on the run, incomplete. Good coverage downfield and really nowhere to go. Did, he did well to get rid of it, uh, Chris, don't you think? Yeah, two two or three Foxes there in the backfield. DeMaio made a great play, using his legs to get out in the space and just made the smart play, throw it out of bounds, and uh, come up for third and short here for the Cyclones. This broadcast brought to you in part by Cash Imprints from shirts to banners and everything in between. Imprint your message on the community with Cash Imprints. 317-1473. 5.56 to go here in the first quarter. We're scoreless so far. Here is third and a long one, short two for the Cyclones. DeMaio Hunter going to keep it all the way. Here comes a lot of blue jerseys. He runs away from a couple and... He's going to be a little shy of a first down. Did you see a penalty flag in there? Yeah, back judge threw one in here. Looks like to be in the area of holding. Uh, That's usually uh, what it is in that area, isn't it? You can almost uh, predict it. As they sort this one out, we'll tell you this broadcast brought to you in part by CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932, hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center. All right, well, we've got 5.47 to play here in the first quarter. And we've got a third and two coming up. When it was all said and done. Block in the back, but they declined it. So it brings up fourth down, and we'll see uh, Braden Capolini, the Cyclone punter. And that return man stepping, uh, going deep for East King George, rather, is Makai White. And uh, he is plenty dangerous. Capolini, the punter, awaits the snap. He's got it. Here's his kick. High kick. This is going to be fielded by Makai White at the 45. White gets across midfield, Eastern View territory, inside the 45, down to about the 43. And that's where King George will set up on offense for the third time tonight. Uh, and I think that uh, Chris, in their first two possessions, I thought the Eastern View Cyclone defense uh, really has stepped up. I think 
knowing they were going to be tested in that secondary, they've held up pretty good so far. Yeah, they've held up well. I mean, the only completion downfield was that uh, third down play to Wiggins. Uh, and, and like we said, uh, Grimsley was right there to sniff it out. But first possession here for the Foxes in Eastern View Cyclone territory is a starting spot. So we'll see if they, uh, if they run the ball here a little more, if they try to keep testing that secondary to get into the end zone. All right, so Foxes on offense. They're at the Cyclone 43 to start this drive. Zach Ferguson, the quarterback, hands off. Running back. Makes a uh, nice move, gets into that secondary. Here's a penalty flag coming in late, and this was a hard running by senior running back Aiden Wolfolk for King George. He picked up a bunch of yards, and we'll see if they're going to tack on some more here or what the situation is. What did you see with that, Chris? I think, uh, Chris? I think we might have a face mask on the Well, the referees are pointing backwards now, but it looked like we might have had a face mask there on... Uh, on the Cyclones, but you see see the Cyclones there pointing back towards the Foxes, so might have had a holding downfield. Yep, here comes the call. False start against King George. Face mask, Eastern View, offsetting penalties. So I think the uh, Cyclones kind of breathe a sigh of relief with that. Yeah, the Cyclones survive there with that illegal shift, <laughs> and then they get, they get saved off that face mask, because you're looking at, I mean, you're looking at first down on the 15, if, uh, if we don't have that illegal shift there by the Foxes. So we'll uh, play first down again. All right. So Zach Ferguson, King George's quarterback, brings the team to the line of scrimmage. A first and 10, back to first and 10 from the Eastern View 43-yard line. All right, here's Ferguson. He's got time. Down the middle of the field he goes, and this one is caught. That is a touchdown strike to Makai White. And that is a 43-yard touchdown catch. Pass and catch from Zach Ferguson to Makai White. Chris, we knew they were going to test them, and that was just a beautiful throw by Ferguson. He threw it exactly where he had to put it. Yeah, White gets single coverage on the outside, and uh, Ferguson just laid it right up there for him for him to make the catch. And like you said, that was a beautiful throw. Dropped it right in there for him, and uh, the Foxes strike first. We'll make it 6 nothing with 4.54 to play. Max Lipinski on for the point after for the Foxes. The snap, the hold, the kick up, and good. 7 nothing. our score in favor of King George. 4.54 to play in this first quarter. This broadcast brought to you in part by Battlefield Automotive. Willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. That's Battlefield Automotive, 540-547-3673. And again, we're live this year, and our live sponsor, of course, is Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able, heating and air, 718-7556. Want to give thanks to uh, Johnny Krawchuk, uh, station manager, always does a great job filming the games uh, and uh, you know sort of weathering the elements wherever we go. Nicole Wooten back in the studio at the Culper Media Network. We appreciate your work. Uh, and I'm uh, happy to be working with Chris Frazier tonight. I'm Mark O'Connell. You heard uh, that uh, we're, we usually have a pretty good time, and Chris, it's great for you to be here, and I hope Steve is enjoying his time. And He may even be tuning in to uh, find out how these Cyclones are doing. This one's going to be returned from inside the five-yard line. And there's a, yet another penalty flag down as uh, the return man for um, Eastern View there was uh, Trey Brock. Let's check the call. Brock brings him out to about the 25, 26 yard line, but yet another, like you said, and like yet another flag on the uh, on the kick return here. See if the Cyclones can get closer to midfield on this. You know, it would really be a compliment, the ultimate compliment to an offensive lineman if you were a professional and you had more Pro Bowl appearances in your career than you had penalty uh, for holding. That would be, That's that like would the be something. pinnacle, isn't it, of success? This is a holding against the Eastern View uh, 
punt receiving team. And now they have marked it back to the Cyclone 17 yard line. So uh, poor field position, not the worst, but it's at the 17. Uh, players like DeMaio Hunter and his offensive teammates have find ways, have, they have found ways this, this year to, to work their offense and you know, negate some bad field position. Here's DeMaio Hunter looking for room. He's got some across the 20, 25, 30, and then out of bounds. This is a first down for Eastern View. And the Foxes are getting pressure, but DeMaio Hunter, again, is doing a great job using his legs. And we've seen it in, in multiple games. I mean, using his, using his legs to pick up these first downs and to move the pocket around and just mm -hmm. for, for, a, for a kid that's picked up quarterback over the summer. Yeah. You know, he, he's done a great job. And I know just from seeing him uh, around the school and everything, going to camps and going to all these different things, but to actually do it, he's been doing a great job. So in a, in a couple words, you would say he's been a quick study. Now this was a fumble by Hunter. He picks it up and he's gonna dive back, dive forward, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. I think he's been a quick study. I think we've watched him uh, develop this year. And I think that it seems like Chris, with each game, he's, uh, you know, his confidence level has been uh, picked up and boosted. And I, I think last week, seeing him roll out, uh, throw uh, some accurate uh, tight spiral passes and uh, just some really clutch moments. Yeah, I think a game, a game like last week and the last couple games where they've been able to put some points on the board is definitely a confidence booster. 3.50 to play, 7 nothing Foxes. DeMaio Hunter going to air it. Mid uh, across the uh, center of the field, got a receiver at the 45 and works his way down all the way. This is uh, uh, number two, Jaden Williams of Eastern View. Biggest play of the game for the Cyclones, and this ought to be a real uh, confidence booster for this team. They were looking there at, uh, what, second and 11, and they complete this pass. The line of scrimmage was a 30. They get it all the way down to the King George Looks like they're going to mark it at the 19. So, uh, you know, you do the math, that's a 51-yard uh, play there by the Cyclones. Yeah, that's a huge play there, huge catch by Jaden Williams. And, again, we've talked about it with Ferguson and now Hunter dropping that pass right where it needs to be. That was in double coverage. And right. DeMaio puts a great ball on Jaden Williams, and he just does his job, catches the ball, and makes a good run downfield. But what a heck of a throw by Hunter. Yeah, and so, you know, like you said, both quarterbacks showing that they can throw it with good accuracy. Well, 3.33 to play, clock stop, first quarter. Fox is seven, Cyclones nothing. Uh, timeout on the field, and our timeout sponsor uh, this year is UVA Community Credit Union, strengthening the financial health of our members and the Culpeper community. UVACreditUnion.org. All right. So, you know, like we say, both these quarterbacks – uh, showing us, uh, you know, providing some excitement with their passes to their receivers. And you just mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, that pass thrown into pretty tight coverage there. Uh, Jaden Williams on the reception. Yeah, Jaden Williams on the catch there, and usually a running back, uh, but doing a good job in the slot tonight. And the Cyclones have gone with this empty shotgun set multiple times now. They sure have. DeMaio Hunter. Feels the pressure, steps away from him. Now he's got to reverse this direction, looking for a block, looking downfield, throws it short. Penalty flag comes in as it looks like Brett Clatterball has hauled that one in uh, at the 19-yard line. And that was really the line of scrimmage because DeMaio Hunter covered a lot of yards back there, scrambling and looking for a, a little freedom to throw that football. Yeah, and the offensive line, you might have Chop block? Chop block there. Yep, chop block against uh, Eastern View. So while he's running around, somebody threw that chop block. And uh, But what I was going to say before that is props to that offensive line, though, for not getting downfield. Yeah. When, when you got a guy running around like that, and Clatterball makes a heck of a catch there on the scramble drill. But the Cyclones are going to back it up here and see if they can make another big play to get him into the red zone. Well, they mark this one off back to the King George 41 because it's 15 from the spot. The line of scrimmage was the 19. Now it goes to the 41. And first down coming back up again. And they have got to get to the nine-yard line for a first down. DeMaio Hunter fakes it. Here comes some pressure. And they get to him this time. 
for the sack at the 45-yard line. Had a couple of players coming over, and they really closed fast, Chris. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to run that shovel. Play, uh, oh, saying incomplete pass now, so he got it off. Oh, he did. End. He was able to get it and avoid but it the looked sack. But like, it looked like they were trying to run a little shovel pass there for, um, it looked like Jaheim Fry. Uh, but Clatterball was in there as well. But trying to uh, use this, the Fox's pressure against them by almost like a screen pass, but using that little shovel pass there. All right, from the 41-yard line, second down. A bunch to go here. DeMaio Hunter looking downfield. Pretty good coverage down there. And they do sack. Well, he, the ball was loose, and it goes out of bounds. Eastern View will retain possession, but they did get to DeMaio Hunter that time. Chris, and he was not able to get rid of the ball for an incomplete pass. Yeah, and I didn't catch the number on that one, but King George is what they're doing right now, and I want to say it's – I can't pick up his number right now. It might be number six, um, Xavier Thompson, but they're running a spy on him where they just have a guy mirroring what he does. If he mm -hmm. fades out to that right side, that linebacker, or that safety that's coming down is mirroring him to try to keep his legs in check, but the, the pressure just got there from the backside for the Foxes. It'll be interesting to see then – uh, with that, uh, the situation, how the Cyclones adjust to it to create uh, some opportunities for this team. DeMaio Hunter going to keep this one all the way. And he makes a cut to the inside, cross midfield, and got to the King George uh, 47. He's going to bring up a fourth down and long, and we'll see Brayton Capolini and the punt team for Eastern View. 2.30 to play, first quarter. It's seven nothing foxes. I think if you're the Cyclones here, you've got to get that ball out quick. Try to. They, we saw it on the first play where they tried to run the the screen out there to the flat, and we're just seeing the, the deeps trying to go deep here. Capolini kicking this one from the 43 yard line, and the return man there is going to watch this one go by him, and it doesn't look like they can down it before it gets to the end zone. Ethan Chase. Uh, let the ball go past him, and it turned out to be. They're marking it at the one. Are they marking it at the one? Yeah. They they did stop it before it got to the uh, end zone. Then. Yeah, it's. Uh, that was a ch that was a gamble by Chase, and it pays off for the Cyclones, Chris. Yeah, I mean, what a, a heck of a bounce there by Capolini on yeah. that punt. But I guess uh, high school, it's different than the NFL, where you can't carry the momentum into the end zone. You see the guys diving and trying to push it back and all that, but. I mean, hey, if you're the Cyclones, that's what you want to see out of your punt team. Try to get them back into that deep situation and see if you can make something happen here. I'm not the best in math, but by my tally, that's a 56-yard punt by Capolini. There we go. Yeah, down to the one-yard line. Opportunity here for this Eastern View defense. Ooh. This is where, if you're the Cyclones, names like Brett Clatterball and Now, here's Zach Walker. Ferguson. He was a little bit in trouble there, Chris. Didn't mean to interrupt you, but... Uh, it, uh, they were, it looked like it was a little bit of trouble in the end zone. He was able to squirt out of there, go forward, and get to about the three, pick up a two yards on the on the play. That's it. Yeah, Ferguson gives them a little breathing room there, but they, they, they went quick snap on that one. They caught me. They caught me talking there, but you can see if you can get these guys to get some pressure in the, in the backfield for the Cyclones. Well, we're down to a minute 30 uh, here in the first quarter. Foxes lead 7 nothing, but they have it now second down in eight deep in their own territory inside that five-yard line at the three. Zach Ferguson, the signal caller here. He's going to throw it. He's going to air it out near side. Making a diving catch is Chance Wiggins at the 43-yard line and in close coverage there was that Eastern View player. Uh, was it uh, Isom Addo? Mm -hmm. Isom Addo? I mean, it was pretty good coverage, but just an outstanding throw, and Wiggins made the diving catch. Beautiful thing to see unfold. Yeah, heck of a catch there. That ball's coming directly over his head, and Wiggins just makes a great catch on decent coverage there by Addo. I mean, looks like. Well, you know, we talked about these receivers. I mean, the high school football world locally knows all about them. They've heard of Chance Wiggins, and they've heard of uh, Makai White. White has the team's touchdown uh, so far in this game. Chance Wiggins and Makai White. Both juniors, both standing in at six feet four. One is 195 pounds, the other 185 pounds. I mean, 
they're they're really just uh, tremendous receiving targets. And look at the hands, and then the you know, to be able to watch that ball in as you make a diving catch. I mean, not everybody can do that. Yeah, even with a guy on you or not on you, that's a that's a heck of a catch there by Wiggins. So. Uh, and, and Ferguson puts out another good ball. He throws it up. They have that single coverage there. And right now the Cyclones are trying to figure out, and that's probably why that timeout was taken, what they can do to try and limit limit the time that Ferguson has there in the backfield. Yeah, our timeout sponsor is UBA Community Credit Union, strengthening the financial health of our members and the Culpeper community. UBACreditUnion.org. 106 to play. First quarter action. King George on offense. They have a new set of downs thanks to that big catch by Chance Wiggins from their own 42-yard line. Ferguson fakes right, throws downfield, long, and then another catch fighting off the defensive coverage was number four, Makai White, his second touchdown of the night, and it comes from 58 yards from Zach Ferguson to Makai White. Yeah, they had the fake out here to Wiggins, and, and – uh, Makai White was able to get a step on the Cyclone cornerback, and, and that was all he needed was a step, and that Ferguson to deliver the ball right there to him. And then, you know, you look at uh, Wiggins, and there was, it looked like a little bit of contact between he and the defender, and it was as uh, Wiggins just sort of out, uh, you know, had the physicality uh, factor on his side, Chris, and he was able to wiggle free enough to, to haul in that catch. Max Lipinski on for the point after. The snap, the hold, the kick, it's up, it's good. It's 14-0 in favor of King George. 58 seconds to play here in this first quarter. And the score is uh, summed up by saying two nice touchdown passes from Zach Ferguson to Makai White. Long distance, both of them, and two point after attempts good by Max Lipinski. Uh, Chris, that's, East, that's the King George perspective. Eastern View had secondary had been uh, up to the task for a while, but it looks like King George has kind of uh, found a way to uh, to exploit something there with these two big touchdown passes. Yeah, both times we've uh, we've seen it a one on one on the outside there on White, and not sure if they're they're doubling Wiggins on the other side there, or they're trying to keep everything underneath with uh, pass per, or, uh, pass rush. But wonder uh, if we see a see a defensive change here for the Cyclones to try and back things up a little bit. Well, I think the the other concern is is that King George had, had done a good job on defense at last sequence where they were putting pressure on DeMaio Hunter, and he, and he was scrambling. He was making some time for himself back there. But looking downfield, there must have been good coverage. And uh, at some point, uh, you, you run out of time to do anything, and the defense is all over you. So that's the adjustment. Here's an onside kick taken, not successfully by King George, but... They tried to catch the Cyclones napping, and they were not able to. Uh, so would you say pull the wool over the eyes of uh, Kevin Berg, who hauled it in for the Cyclones? Yeah, Berg was able to pull it in there. And, the, you know, it, it's not really a surprise when you stop and come together like that. I'm not yeah. sure if that was the if that was the intention or if they were thought they saw something there off of film. But giving the Cyclones in a 14 nothing game uh, a much shorter field here, we do have a penalty and even more yardage for the Cyclones after the play, personal foul, diving on the pile uh, from the Foxes there. They're going to give the Cyclones a first down in plus territory. Yeah, I don't even know if they use these terms anymore, but I know growing up I used, I used to hear the term piling on. Yeah, but they're, uh, it's, not a, it's like the guy giving himself up uh, when they jump on the ground there. They don't want people jumping on there. But you see it on fumbles and yeah. everything like that. Everybody piles on and tries to grab the ball when they're on the ground. East of you now at the King George 40. Outstanding field position. 55 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Let's check the running back number there. I believe it was number 23. That's Darius Stafford. For Eastern View. I was going to ask you, Chris, so the Eastern View offense needs to figure out maybe, you know, some wrinkle here where they can uh, start putting something together because King George's defense had been kind of smothering that last possession. Let's see what they do here. They have it second and eight. Back to the run they go. Nowhere to go there. Darius Stafford is just going to have to take a loss here on the play as uh, King George really snuffed that one out nicely. 
Yeah, and the Cyclones going back to a one-back set here, uh, running the ball a little bit more, and after good yardage on first down, they sniff out that run by Stafford there and put him in a third and long again. And the final seconds now ticking off this first quarter clock. It's official. We've played one quarter at King George High School where our score is Foxes 14, Cyclones nothing. We'll take a break and come back for the second quarter right after this. This broadcast is brought to you by the following community sponsors. Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. Battlefield Automotive, willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. Battlefield Automotive, 547-3673. CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. Hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center, 825-2200. Found and Sons, more than a respected funeral home, they support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Found and Sons, 825-3530. From shirts to banners and everything in between. Imprint your message on the community with Cash Imprints 317 1473. KM Lawn Garden and Arborist Supply, now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. KM, from grass to trees, they aim to please. 825 8371. All right, welcome back to our broadcast. Start of the second quarter, finds each of you on offense looking at a third and 12, and they don't get much here, if anything, as Darius Stafford was uh, tackled by King George's Damon Duffin. Fourth down coming up, and we'll see Brayton Capolini once more. Yeah, the Cyclones tried to get out there on the outside there with Stafford, and uh, Fox is just Sniffed it out there again, but see if Capolini can pin him back deep here again and uh, we can get a different result for the Cyclones. Yeah, that last kick was 56 yards. Pinned him deep. Capolini stands at his 45. He'll kick it from about midfield. This one nearly blocked. High kick. Doesn't look like it's going to be returned and it's going to go out of bounds at the 25 yard line. 25 uh, yard kick that time by Braden Capolini. Referee down here said it was tipped, put his hands up on the tip there because that's why the contact was allowed on the punter, but the Fox has got pressure down there and we're able to tip one, it looks like. Yep, do believe you are right. And uh, let's check the spot here. King George on offense. And it'll start on its own 25. Opening minute here the second quarter. Our score, King George 14, Eastern View nothing. Zach Ferguson of King George has thrown two really nifty touchdown passes tonight, threw in the first quarter, and you now he and his teammates go back on offense, starting at their own 25. Ferguson hands off, running back, I believe that was Aiden Wolfolk. And a head for one yard out to the 26. That's it. You know, it was Wolf folk. Second down and nine coming up here. You mentioned, Chris, uh, Eastern View come in, comes into tonight's game with a record of, what, seven and one? And, and so that's eight games. They play tonight, King George. And then next week, they close out the regular season uh, against Cortland. And King George, I think you mentioned, uh, uh, hasn't played as many games, have they? King George at 6-0, and they had a game against Culpepper that uh, I think was moved because of that weather that came up from the hurricane. Right, and I think it's been moved tentatively to the November 1st. Back to the run here. An opening and then a burst of energy for Aiden Wolfolk into the Cyclone secondary, into the Cyclone uh, side of midfield. Big gainer down to the Eastern View, 48. And that's a... Uh, Pick up of 26 yards on the play by Aiden Wolfo. 
Yeah, we've seen Wolf work on the ground, white through the air with Ferguson passing to him. It's just been trying to stop one thing, they go to the other thing. The Cyclones just have to figure out what we're, what works for them here and uh, haven't been able to get pressure in the backfield yet. That's, the, that's been the key difference for the Cyclones. All right, first and 10 now, King George on the Eastern View 49. Back to Wolfolk, the ball carrier, tries to bounce outside the pack and does. Still looking for running room, still on his feet as he dances down the far sidelines. He got down to about the 41-yard line, it looks like, and a pickup of eight yards. And, Chris, it looked like the Cyclones sort of had him bottled up there. Yeah, a couple guys had him there almost uh, with, a, with about a gain of two or three, and then he was able to break free to set up, uh, looks like second and one. So a nice run by uh, Aiden Woolfolk. Looks like uh, Foxes now have it second down at about one. Back to Woolfolk they go, and he is tackled for a loss by Braden Walker at the 45. A loss of four, four yards on the play will bring up third and six. This broadcast brought to you in part by Fountain Sons, which is more than a respected funeral home. They support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Fountain Sons, 825-3530. Zach Ferguson looks to the sidelines here for the play call on uh, third and six from the 45-yard line. The clock continues to run. We're approaching the nine-minute mark of the second quarter. We mentioned the score is 14-0 in favor of the home team, King George. Here's Ferguson running to his left, throwing incomplete. Intended for Makai White, but I think Ferguson may have just been trying to get rid of that one. He certainly felt the pressure from the Cyclone defense. Yeah, that time Keegan Murphy-Brown and Braden Walker got back and were able to flush him out to his left and uh, put him out there to deliver a throw there. And it looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. Right, on fourth and six, you're up 14 to nothing. You have the ball at the 45-yard line. They line up to uh, go for it, no doubt. Let's see what uh, they actually do. What are they going to call a timeout? Well, King George, and think about it on fourth and six. And that will uh, give us an opportunity to tell you that uh, this broadcast is brought to you in part by Cash Imprints, from shirts to banners and everything in between. Imprint your message on the community with Cash Imprints, 317-1473. Also want to mention CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. That's hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center. All right, uh, Chris, what do you think so far? Cyclones have just had some unfortunate penalties. You saw the, the big catch and run down there by Jaden Williams. Ended up back in their own territory where they punted from. Uh, and then a, a couple long balls by Ferguson. I mean, it's been the, the mm -hmm. little plays that have been the difference here. And I think, I mean, at 14 nothing, you're not out of the game with eight minutes left before halftime, but the Cyclones have to, well, they force the punt here, it looks like, but have to get a, a, get a score or two before halftime to, to keep managing this offense and, and well, King George offense. And during the timeout, Chris, uh, the uh, coaching staff decided that rather than go for it on fourth and six, they'll send the punter Max Lipinski out there to punt this one away to the Cyclones. Here's Lipinski's kick from the 45. Fair catch called for, fumbled, and let's see who's got it. King George says they do, but uh, those fellas in the black and white stripes always make the ultimate decision. It is Eastern View ball. So we had the uh, fair catch that was called for, but not uh, executed, and the fumble apparently took a pretty good uh, Eastern View bounce where they had certainly people in position to pounce on it. That would have been a turnover and uh, would, have, would have put King George here in the red zone against Eastern View. Instead, the Cyclones keep it and uh, they go back on offense here, trailing 14 to nothing. Looked like Derek Stafford was able to jump on it there for the Cyclones and really really save it here for the, for the time being. All right, from the 11. Now goes Eastern View. 
This is uh, Jaheem Fry, the ball carrier. Got across the 15 out to about the 16. Five-yard pickup brings up second down and five. This broadcast brought to you in part by K&M Lawn and Garden and Arborist Supplies, now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. K&M, from grass to trees, they aim to please. All right, second and five here for the Cyclones from the 16-yard line. DeMaio Hunter, signal caller, hands off. Jaheem Fry once more left side, not much doing. Uh, King George's uh, uh, player there, number 15, makes the tackle, and that is Charles Johnson, linebacker, 6'2", 220, sophomore. Well, we got third down coming up, Chris. The Cyclones here going back to that run game that they've been successful with, but third medium here, see if we can get one picked up and then kind of run the rest of the offense here, finish out with a score. On third and five, DeMaio Hunter stepping up. Here comes the pressure. Won't be able to get rid of it, and they sack him for a loss. Back at the 10-yard line, that's a six-yard loss. It's going to bring up fourth down and 11. And the Foxes get home again there, make the sack to force the Cyclones to punt. Hopefully uh, see if Capolini can put him out by midfield, but this is a punting from his own end zone situation after they got pressure last time on the punt. Sure did so. So Rajat Walker and uh, Makai White back for the Foxes. They stand at about the 40-yard line of Eastern View. Capolini in the end zone there. Comes out, kicks it from about the two. This one, King George, is, uh, they filled it at the 40 after a couple of bounces and then tackled immediately was the return man there, Ethan Chase. So, uh, but regardless, East, uh, King George, Chris, will have outstanding field position here, 10 yards inside of the uh, Eastern View side of midfield. Yeah, and they're again starting at in plus territory uh, for the Foxes, but Cyclones did a good job covering it up there. Uh, Keegan Murphy-Brown as well as Kevin Berg, I'm sorry, Kevin Berg was there uh, for the stop, but just see if the Cyclones can limit the big play again and get another punt and try again before the half. All right, King George. We'll talk the on the Eastern View 39 here. 6.48 to play in the second quarter. King George 14, Eastern View nothing. Zach Ferguson, the Foxes quarterback, has two touchdown passes tonight. Now to go back to the run. This is uh, Aiden Wolfolk. And Wolfolk gets to about the 30, picked up nine yards on the play. Will bring up second and one, unless he got enough for a first down. He had to get to the 29. It looks like he may be a yard short. Yeah, they mark it at the 30. Second and one there. The clatter ball came from that middle linebacker spot, was able to make the stop there. And they're, the, the Foxes right now are getting those blockers to the second level, causing problems for clatter ball and Walker to get to the ball carrier. But there, there's uh see if we can get pressure here on second and short. All right, second and one to be exact. Line of scrimmage, the Eastern View 30 for King George. Approaching the midway mark of this second quarter. Here's Ferguson. Here comes the pressure. Ferguson throws downfield into the end zone. This one looks like it's caught. And we're waiting. Nope. They're going to rule it incomplete. I guess he was out of bounds when he wasn't able to get his feet in, or at least one of his feet in. And the intended receiver there was uh, number number one. That's yeah. Chance Wiggins. There he is. Made yeah. a nice catch, but it I looked, guess he was out of bounds. It looked like Ferguson was just throwing that away at first, and Chance mm -hmm. Wiggins was able to come down with it. it. It was harder to see from up here, but that was very close, very close. Very, very close. And I'll tell you one thing. It probably doesn't do anything to hurt uh, Ferguson's self-confidence, does it? No, not at all, especially if you're getting pressure and you make a good throw like that. I mean, that's, that's a heck of a throw for him. Well, I'm impressed with both quarterbacks' uh, arms and their ability to throw these rifled passes. Ferguson keeps it. Quarterback keep all the way, makes a couple cuts, breaks a tackle, and Ferguson is in the end zone on a 30-yard gallop. Well, did you did you see that one coming, uh, Chris, with uh, quarterback keeper all the way? No, they run a little read option there to the right side, and I was not expecting Ferguson to keep it there. With the success that Wolfork has had on the ground, thought mm -hmm. they were just going to pick up the first down, but 
Ferguson takes off to the right side there and scampers down 30 yards for the touchdown. He sure does with 5.53 to play here in the second quarter. Our score 20 to nothing. Max Lipinski on for his third point after attempt. Right now he's two for two. And things going King George's way. So here's the snap and the hole. Lipinski's kick is up and good. 21 to nothing in favor of the Foxes. 5.53 to play in this first half. This broadcast brought to you in part by k and Lawn and Garden and Arborist Supplies. Now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. k and from grass to trees, they aim to please. All right. And also Battlefield Automotive. Willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. That's Battlefield Automotive, 540-547-3673. Chris, I think it'd be quite a challenge if, you, if they said, uh, if someone said to you, now say that fast five times straight. Yes, it would. But Battlefield Automotive, k and uh, Lawn and Garden, Arbor Supplies, Found and Sons, Cash Imprints, CFC Farm and Home Center, our sponsors, we're grateful for them. Of course, our UVA credit, Community Credit Union is our timeout sponsor, and our live sponsor, of course, is Able Heating and Air. Mark O'Connell, Chris Frazier, Johnny Krawcheck with you tonight from King George High School. So far, Chris, virtually all Foxes, the scoreboard indicates the same. 21 to nothing. Here's Lipinski's kick, end over end. This one's deep. This one will go in the end zone for the touchback, and the Cyclones will take over from their own 20-yard line. Well, I know I don't put you on the spot, but Chris, if you're coaching Eastern View right now, and you're down 21 to nothing, and you know what King George can do offensively, but you've got to get your offense in uh, sync right here. What do you think that the Cyclones can do differently to, to sort of change the complexion of this game? I think with 5.53 still left in the first half here, and keep in mind, you do get the ball to start the second half, the whole playbook is still open. You've got right. to go with what you're comfortable with, try to put points on the board here if you're the Cyclones, and then turn around, get the ball in the second half, and keep that rolling. Right. You know, you get early into the third quarter, and you're sitting at 21-14, we're at a brand new game. So well, you've got to have that mindset that you can just score once and then keep it going. Yeah, well said. So, from the 20, go the Cyclones, DeMaio Hunter. Jaheim Fry, the ball carrier, got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe one yard more, and that's it. And uh, King George's Xavier Thompson makes the tackle for his team. And the Cyclones have put out a few different running backs now. We're seeing Jaheim Fry now. Uh, obviously, Tamayo Hunter has been there as well, and Jaden Williams on the big catch and run. So trying to throw everything they have at the Foxes. Second and nine. Will play action now. Throw near side. This one incomplete. Looks like it was intended for a diving Brett Clatterball trying to come back to it. Uh, pass incomplete. Yeah, Brett Clatterball there on the catch. Demayo Hunter did a good job hiding the ball there on the play action. Just didn't open up there for him at all on that right side. Another third down here for the Cyclones. Third and nine from the 21. with 5.18 to play in this one. Let's see what DeMaio Hunter can draw, draw up for the team. They need nine. Oh, this one's a high snap over the head of DeMaio Hunter. This ball goes into the end zone, out of the end zone. This will be a safety for King George. Well, that's not exactly what you drew up, is it? Not at all. The snap just goes over his head there. Um, and DeMaio Hunter did everything he could to pick it up and get out of the end zone, but with pressure right there on him, they're lucky that it was just recovered for a safety and not a touchdown. Yeah, that's true. That'll make it 23 to nothing. And I always say that the uh, insult to injury after a safety is not only did you give it the two points, but now you have to free kick it back to the team that just got the two points. Yeah, exactly, and especially at the rate the Foxes have been scoring, you really have to limit it here before halftime to stay in this game. Yeah. So... You know, we're in the first half and a lot of action ahead of us and anything can happen. And things tend to change, uh, can change on a dime, as the expression goes. But uh, King George seems to have 
I'll just say to keep it simple, they seem to have things going their way, Chris. Yeah, they do. And like you said, things can change in one instant. I mean, it, you, one big touchdown can take the wind out of the sails. We saw it early on that big touchdown by Makai White. It was almost like the Cyclones were just waiting to see what the next big play was going to be. But they can get one, you know, here before halftime. It can change the change the momentum going into the locker room and kind of what you're talking about going in mm -hmm. there. Back deep for the Foxes, awaiting uh, Braden Capolini's punt or Ethan Chase and Rajet Walker. Well, it's not going to be a punt. It's going to be a free kick uh, from Capolini at the 20. So they need a, a good boot here by Capolini. And here it is. End over end. This one caught at the 35-yard line. This is the return man, number 14, Ethan Chase. Chase comes along the near sidelines, gets inside the Eastern View 40 down to the 39. So, again, outstanding field position by, for King George, Chris, and now they have a short field to work with, and uh, they'll look to pad their lead. It's already 23 to nothing here with 5.06 to play in the second quarter. Yeah, this is the third drive for King George where they've started in Cyclone territory around the second in a row from the 39-yard line. But the, like you said, the, the Foxes are just trying to keep it going here with five minutes left in the second quarter. The Cyclones need to stop here and quick turnaround and score to change that momentum. Well, they send Chance Wiggins, receiver, top of your screen wide right. Down at the bottom is Makai White. Ferguson. Going to air it out long. He's throwing near the end zone. Coming on under it, incomplete. Trying to make a diving catch. And, boy, he just missed that one. And that was uh, Chance Wiggins with the diving uh, attempt at this one. Yeah, another Chance Wiggins had, had a step on the Cyclone corner there, uh, Jason Spencer. But just a one of the, one of the few overthrows there by mm -hmm. Ferguson tonight. But... You know, I was going to say, Chris, I mean, I'm not taking away anything from Zach Ferguson. That was certainly not his best throw of the game. But we know that he uh, he, he can generally throw with some uh, pinpoint accuracy. Oh, yeah, and it looks like uh, the Cyclones will get a play here without Wiggins as his helmet came off there mm -hmm. at the end of that play. So he is on the sideline for that mandatory one play when your helmet comes off. Ethan Chase may have replaced him near side, but they go to the run anyway. And this is Aiden Wolfolk, the ball carrier. He got the edge, picked up a few yards, goes out of bounds to stop the clock, just shy of a King George first down. 45 seconds to play here in this first half. And we do have another flag down here. Looks to be in the area of holding there on that stretch run. The referees over there talking to the Cyclones coaches, and now we'll get the call. Good call, Chris. You called it holding against King George. So they'll mark it off here. Well, we mentioned our uh, live sponsor is uh, Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. All right, 451 to play. They have marked the ball back at the Eastern View 49. And King George now has it uh, second down and about 19. We've got to get to the 29, so second and 20 for a first down. Zach Ferguson, here comes the pressure. He throws. This one caught inside the 40 by uh, Chance Wiggins. And uh, that was pretty good coverage out there. It was Eastern View's uh, Kevin Berg, he went up for it, wasn't able to bat it down there, Chris. Yeah, they had a corner deep on Wiggins there. They had Wiggins and White on the, or uh, Makai White on the same side this time. And Kevin Berg came underneath. And Kevin Berg is a tall kid. I mean, listed at 6'2", but I, I think he might be a little bit taller than that. Standing by him a couple times before. But but to, to throw that ball right over his head and right. chance Wiggins to keep his feet in, that's a great play by Ferguson and Wiggins. Keep his feet in and stay focused on the travel or flight of that football, knowing you had a guy in front of you trying to uh, bat it down or intercept it. Here's a short throw. This is Makai White going to work in the open field with his footwork. Gets down just shy of the 20-yard line. That's going to be nearly a 19-yard pickup by Makai White. And we have another flag over there as well. Well, we've had uh, certainly uh, our share of uh, 
yellow flags thrown here tonight. Not keeping the stats on that, but if you're the coaches, I think that uh, both coaches would say, you've got to clean up the penalties. And I didn't catch the call there, but I think that might have been um, an eligible player downfield. And on those screen passes, if the timing's off at all, that's a, that's a tough play. Oh, no, another holding. And they push the ball back to the Eastern View 45. It was at the 20. So at the 45 now, it is third down and about 15. Okay, to get a first down, they got to get to the 29. So we'll call it third and 16. And we got a timeout taken by King George. All right. So we look, uh, you know, this is uh, game number nine of the season for the Cyclones, Chris. And if we went through uh, how this uh, season so far has played out, uh, we would say that, uh, you know, it all started on August 26th for the Cannonball Classic. Uh, Eastern View defeated Culpepper 41 to 14. Following week, they were at Liberty, they won 30 to 20. Then they were at Stafford, they won 28 to nothing. And then they were home to Brook Point back on September 16. And that was a game, if my memory serves, serves me correctly, Eastern View scored the first six points, but then Brook Point had 28 unanswered, and, they, and Brook Point won 28 to 6. Then after that, uh, Eastern View uh, dealt Chancellor a shutout, 42 to nothing. Then they were home to Caroline and won big, 54 to 23. At James Monroe, they won in lopsided fashion, 55 to 6. Same thing uh, against Spotsylvania, 64 to 14 last week, and now taking on King George. And they're in a position right here they haven't been in where they got to play this come from behind football down 23 to nothing here uh, with four minutes to play in the second quarter. After the timeout, Zach Ferguson has third and 15. Here's Ferguson. He's in trouble. And they're going to tackle him for a loss back at the King George 45-yard line. And two or three Cyclones in on the tackle, including the last man up there, Josh Perez. Yeah, we saw Josh Perez get home there as well as Keegan Murphy-Brown. And you're looking at the Cyclones now being able to get pressure on those passes and it might be notable that Makai White is on the sideline with his helmet off. Looks like he got some tape on that ankle there. Uh, but something to look at here for the last three minutes of the second quarter. Well, Max Lipinski is on to punt this one away for King George. As the clock continues to run, 3.20 and counting here in the second quarter. Lipinski stands at his 30. And why does Eastern View not have a, a man back there it would be my question. Here's a high kick that won't be returned. Let's check the bounce. It's going to be down at the Eastern View 32-yard line. So they didn't have a man back there to set up the return. Not sure what the explanation for that would be. Not sure if they were worried about a fake with such a being mm. a longer uh, fourth down there. But, well, maybe after two, two muffed punts, you're going to – you're going to take it where it lies and start your offense there. But they, well, they, get, they get a good bounce. There's that. Yeah. So how does it feel being back tonight uh, in the broadcast uh, booth, uh, Chris, since uh, you last you first joined us back on September 16th? feels good. Very excited to be back. It's having a good game tonight. I mean, going King George's way right now, but see if the Cyclones can pick it up. They stay on the, uh, on the ground with this one. And uh, the running back there for Eastern View, Jaden Williams. And that Pick. play was Jaden Williams and Brett Clatterball in the backfield. Now DeMaio Hunter is coming back onto the field. So we'll see if they add that little wrinkle like they've done a couple times this season. Right, where they would bring in Clatterball, maybe do, uh, what, would you call it a wildcat formation? It's a big wildcat. Yeah. Well, you know, and the thing is, you know, it, it really goes without saying that Eastern View certainly wants to get Brett Clatterball into the mix, whether it's offense or defense. And this pass is caught by Jaheim Fry. He made the first defender miss, and he gets out to about the 40-yard line. He'll pick up eight yards, and it'll bring up third down and short from there. 
Yeah, like you were saying, Clatterball's had two targets tonight. One was negated by that penalty, and the Cyclone's going fast here with two minutes left. All right. From the 40, it's third and short. Ball carrier straight ahead. He goes to the 45. He'll have a first down. That was Jaheim Fry. And they do get the first down. Jaheim Fry with a good catch there on second down to set up that third and short. But he's been the Cyclones feature back here in the second quarter. All right, clock continues to run, a minute 45. First down, Cyclones from their own 45. They fake it this time, DeMaio Hunter in a little bit of trouble, just doesn't have quite enough moves to out uh, maneuver four or five of those uh, Royal Blue jerseys coming his way. And it looked as if the Cyclones were trying to run a little rollout play there to the left side to Clatterball who came in motion across the line of scrimmage, but Fox has just got pressure there and kind of blew it up and DeMaio Hunter had to had to take it into his own hands there and try to get a couple yards. Yeah, he ended up getting one. Second and nine is the call here. They go back to the run. And uh, he, King George, rather, does a good job of staying with this one as Jaden Williams, the ball carrier, uh, really just gets back to the line of scrimmage, it looks like, at this point. And the clock's still moving here. I think if you're the Cyclones, you, you want to try and stretch the field here, but not to give the quick striking King George offense any time left with the ball. And I, I think I may have need to correct myself and say that was Jaheim Fry on the ball carry. And we've got third and nine here. All right, here comes the pressure. Set up the screen. This one batted down. Nice defensive play coming in. Courtesy of uh, King George's number 15 there. That is Charles Johnson, the linebacker. 6'2", 220, and a sophomore. Makes a key defensive play for the Foxes. That was a good play by Johnson there, sniffing out that screen pass, but we do have another flag on the field in the Cyclones' backfield. And it's against, uh, King well, George. But he went, I thought he went, uh, he pointed right at first, but yeah. he corrected himself. So that's against King George. I think we had roughing the passer there. It looked like the targeting call from college, uh, but we do not have the targeting review. Uh, for, for high school, so I think that was a roughing the pass that penalty to bail the Cyclones out. Well, this is a big one because now it gives the Cyclones a first down at the King George 39-yard line. But now the Cyclones have one timeout remaining, no, two timeout remaining, and they have 30 seconds in which to try to score before the intermission. Hunter looks right, going to keep it. In trouble, down he goes, 43-yard line, he'll lose four. And the clock uh, will stop with the timeout taken by Eastern View. Yeah, it looked like Hunter there was looking for Trayvon Brock. Uh, they were able to hook up at the end of the second quarter in that Spotsylvania game, the long touchdown, trying to repeat that success. But uh, just, again, pressure in the backfield for the Foxes, able to able to stop any of the longer uh, longer routes there for the Cyclones. We call a timeout. They have one remaining here in this first half, and the ball is at the 43-yard line of King George. There are 20.6 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Uh, and it's been uh, really all Foxes. They lead 23 to nothing here in this one. Now when we start the third quarter, Eastern View will be receiving the kickoff. That's a little bit of good news for the team. But it goes without saying that it would really be a, a real bonus for this team if they could get some uh, points on the scoreboard before the intermission. Yeah, I mean, you're, even any kind of points here. I don't, I don't right. see them getting in and trying to field goal. You're going to try to go deep and score here, but got a different matchup down here on Brock. All right, from the 43, Mayo Hunter throws incomplete. And the intended receiver there uh, for Eastern View. Uh, did you pick up the number? Jaden Williams, it looked like. Williams? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Out of the backfield, it was Jaden Williams. So incomplete. Stops the clock. 17.3 seconds to play. It is third and 14 now. For the Cyclones, they have it at the Foxes' 43-yard line. And again, the Cyclones have one timeout remaining here in this first half. All right, DeMaio Hunter throws near side. And he's got it uh, complete to Trey Brock. 
and uh, really no gain on the play, and will actually uh, lose a yard, it looks like, actually two, because it'll mark it back to the 45, it wasn't the 43, it'll bring up third down, uh, actually, we won't, we won't get another down to play because the clock has expired. So we've played half a ball game here at King George High School. Where it is, Fox is 23, Cyclones nothing. We'll take a break for the intermission. And when we come back for the third quarter, we will see the Cyclones receiving the kickoff. Stay tuned. You're watching Cyclones football on the Culpeper Media Network. This broadcast is brought to you by the following community sponsors. Able Heating and Air answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. Battlefield Automotive, willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. Battlefield Automotive, 547-3673. CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. Hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center, 825-2200. Found and Son, more than a respected funeral home, they support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Found and Sons, 825-3530. From shirts to banners and everything in between. Imprint your message on the community with cash imprints, 317-1473. K&M Lawn, Garden, and Arborist Supply, now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. K&M, from grass to trees, they aim to please, 825-8371. All right, welcome back to our broadcast. We are set to start the third quarter of action at King George High School, where our score is Foxes 23, Cyclones nothing. Eastern View will receive the third quarter kickoff. Chris Frazier uh, has joined us tonight for this broadcast. It's good working with you, Chris. So I kind of want to get your thoughts about the first half, but we talked in the uh, break about how King George quarterback, uh, Zach Ferguson, in that first half threw two uh, very nice looking touchdown passes, and he also ran for one. So he's been uh, in the equation for all three uh, King George touchdowns. Max Lipinski's three for three on the point after, and uh, King George also added a safety. That brings us up to date, 23 to nothing. But beside, or in addition to, recapping the scoring what other uh takeaways did you did you gain from the first half i think with king george we've talked about it a lot with chance wiggins and makai white but what we didn't talk about a lot and what kind of is unknown here is zach ferguson's legs i mean he's been able to avoid pressure in the pocket he's been able to move to his right and left and left and make throws i mean that's been the difference maker so the guys like clatterball and walker and jason spencer and all those guys that are kind of putting pressure on for the Cyclones can't get to them and get a sack in the backfield there. But like you said, with re with recapping the scoring there, it's been all King George so far in the first half. Yeah. So um, if you're Eastern View's head coach, Brian Lowry, and you've got to draw up some X's and O's about some things you might want to do differently to start this uh, second half, I mean, where do you begin? I think first you've got to find that motivation again uh, that you had at the beginning of the game. Give these guys confidence that they can stay with these receivers, that they can make the stops on defense that they did make throughout the second quarter. Just got to, like we said before, limit those big plays, keep everybody in front, and then they can work at extending those drives. But X's and O's, you've just got to get your playmakers in space. I think right now the pressure is getting to Hunter. Uh, and if he can get the ball out to, you know, Trayvon Brock, uh, Jaden Williams, all those all those guys that can get down the field. Uh, try to do it a little bit quicker, get it out into the flats, into the short areas of the field, and see if they can make something happen in the open field. And, you know, uh, so what's uh, Eastern View, you know, up against here in the second half, of course, is trying to figure out some way to overcome a 23 to nothing deficit. Right, and the biggest thing of that 20, 23 to nothing deficit is going to be can they 
to get King George into the second and longs, the third and longs, and able to get some good field position out of it. Maybe a turnover. We haven't seen, we've seen the, the couple times the ball has been put on the ground, the early turnover by the Cyclones there on the punt, but both quarterbacks have been efficient with the ball, no interceptions, no fumbles, nothing like that. If the Cyclones can capitalize on one of those, we might be looking at a different score uh, if they can they can put get it into the end zone. One of the things I've noticed differently about uh, tonight's game for Eastern View in terms of the uh, its opponent's defense, I feel like King George has been able to do uh, a better job defensively of putting uh, more direct pressure and actually catching up with DeMaio Hunter because, you know, in his previous games, you know, he's been elusive, he's been able to be creative, and that sort of thing. It makes me wonder if King George's athleticism uh, represents maybe the uh, next uh, step up on that ladder when you look at some of these other teams because some of these guys have just been all over the place. Yeah, I think King George is putting out almost a book on the how to stop the Mayo Hunter question that a lot of these teams have been asking. Right. Uh, they're, they're getting guys, staying on those spies, letting him kind of move around in the pocket, but that the overall pressure that they're getting is a lot for him. You've got to look what's in front of you as well as try to scan down the field at what's going on, but if the Cyclones can get those guys out in the space and get some plays downfield like we saw early in this first quarter with Jaden Williams, maybe we're in for some scoring here in the second half. Yeah, I think you bring, you bring up a really key point about uh, maybe, uh, you know, opposing coaches down the road when they take on East of you. Well, how do you, how do you, how do you put this sort of pressure on DeMaio Hunter? They're hey, looking at this game film from this Eastern, of uh, the King George game, at least in this first half. Now, we've heard the story about a tale of two halves and a lot of different uh, contests and athletic events. But uh, let's see if uh, Eastern View, here's the kickoff in the end zone. Cyclones all start from their own 20 yard line. And, uh, you know, you're talking about a tale of two halves. Uh, they've got a, you know, a tough uh, row to hoe here in this uh, second half, as the expression goes, uh, Chris. But it'll be interesting to see uh, what sort of changes uh, they, they implement as we start the third quarter. I think it'll be very, uh, we'll be quick to see here in the second half as they still going with, they're still going with uh, Jaheim Fry in the backfield there, seeing a little bit less of Darius Stafford and uh, Jaden Williams in the backfield, maybe see him more as a receiver as he's here in the slot. Here's Hunter. Here comes some pressure. Eastern View picks that up, and then the second tier comes up from the defense to uh, stop Jaheim Fry at the 25. But Fry picked up five yards, and uh, you'll take that on in. Oh, actually, six to the 26 brings up second and four for the Cyclones. Absolutely. And Jaheim Fry is running hard. They've used him a lot in that second quarter. He caught a swing pass out. Uh, just making really good plays for the Cyclones here on offense. All right, play action. DeMaio Hunter keeps it. Line of scrimmage was a 26, maybe got to the 28. And we call it the 29. Looks like we're going to have that third and short, third mm -hmm. and one. And uh, DeMaio Hunter there, another read option play there with Fry and DeMaio Hunter. And he takes right. the read and gets a couple yards. As you said, brings up a third and one. It's a short one for DeMaio Hunter. We've got Jade Williams in the slot here on the right as a receiver. That's Fry in motion. Hunter going to keep this one all the way. He will have a Cyclone first down as he gets to the 35 after a six-yard uh, pickup and a new set of downs for Eastern View. And a great call there by the Cyclones. I mean, just getting DeMaio Hunter into the space that he needs to be in. Like you said, run all the way there, had pulling guards going out, uh, and had a little motion there with uh, Fry in the backfield, a little a little uh, smoke and mirrors there to free up some space for DeMaio Hunter. All right. A minute and a half into this third quarter. Here's DeMaio Hunter. Going to keep it all the way. He's to the 40. He picked up another five yards for the Cyclones. So... Uh, looks like uh, so far the strategy is to get DeMaio Hunter on these read options and maybe keep him the ball himself. Or will they, you know, sort of uh, depend on uh, DeMaio Hunter's legs here in the third? Yeah, it looks to be that way. And you see Darius Stafford coming back in as well. And the Cyclones have the ability to run a few of these running backs through. We see Fry and Stafford in the field now uh, and see if we can get Brett Clatterball down the field here too. DeMaio Hunter again makes the choice. And this time... 
nowhere to go as uh, the, site, the uh, Foxes close in quickly on that one. And that was uh, uh, Jamari Cox making the initial hit for King George. Mark it back at the 37. He lost four. Brings up about third and seven. King George has done a good job keeping everything in front of him here at, uh, in the first half. Demayo Hunter is throwing out there in the flat, incomplete. The intended receiver, it looks like, uh, was uh, Jaden Williams. Incomplete pass, Braden Capolini and the punting team back onto the field for Easterview. And that's not exactly what they had in mind there. They were looking to string together a drive. Uh, Easterview really, uh, they need some points. They need some big plays. Turnovers. Maybe the bounce of the football going their way. Braden Capolini will kick this one from his 28-yard line. This kick is going to be downed at the Eastern, uh, make it King George, rather, 43. So that's a 29-yard uh, punt by Braden Capolini. And King George, Chris, uh, with a 23 to nothing uh, cushion and advantage, I mean, uh, will send its uh, offense on the field for the first time here in the third quarter. And again, with uh, outstanding field position. Yeah, if you're King George, I mean, you're, you're getting that good field position right around midfield for another drive. I, f I feel like they'll rely heavy on Aiden Woolfork here in this second half uh, with the running game going well. And you always have the explosive ability of Makai White and Chance Wiggins. So... Zach Ferguson gonna hand off there to uh, Aiden Wolfolk. Met right right the line of scrimmage, may have lost a yard on the play. We're just under the nine minute mark here in this third quarter and this uh, broadcast brought to you in part by CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. Hometown pricing, outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center. That was a really good play there by Eddie Holmes to be able to jump into the backfield there and stop Wolfert for a negative run. Brings up second and 11. In the backfield, quarterback Ferguson, running back Wolfolk. Here's Ferguson in a little bit of trouble. Shows some pretty good footwork, and with that, he's going to get uh, maybe a yard on the play. It looks like Ferguson, yeah, gets that original line of scrimmage, but he cut that run back and ran right into uh, Brett Clatterball. Uh, so looks like he actually gained one there. So he did. Pushed, it, pushed him for a yard there, but the Cyclones get what they want here, third and long, see if they can get a stop and get the ball back on offense. No, exactly. That's what you want. Put the opposing team in a third and long situation and expect your defense to make the stop, get the ball back, and, you know, clock, uh, you know, eventually becomes a factor. 740 counting here in the third. 23 nothing. King George. Man in motion. Chance Wiggins. Here's Ferguson. Batted down. And that was Eddie Holmes, was it not? Number 17, it was. You just mentioned his name a moment ago. Yeah, Eddie Holmes with the big play on first and uh, first and 10 there for the Cyclones, and then coming up huge on the big third down, batting that ball from Ferguson. They ran, uh, they ran Wiggins on that little trail route again and just didn't hit him, but the Cyclones had that one figured out, and Eddie Holmes was able to break it up. Yeah, he sure did. So Max Lipinski, the King George punter onto the field. And we'll check the return man uh, for the lone safety back there for Eastern View. Trayvon oh. Brock. Okay, number three. Trey Brock is going to stand inside the 25, right at the 25, as Max Lipinski kicks this one from the 33. Taking it on the run, making a diving catch, and holding on to the football is Brock at the 30, maybe the 31 yard line. Okay, this broadcast brought to you in part by Battlefield Automotive, willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. Battlefield Automotive, 540-547-3673. Third quarter action, 731 to play. Uh, Eastern View goes back on offense. They'll start it at a zone uh, 31. 
trailing 23 to nothing. DeMaio Hunter in there. And I believe it's Jaheen Fry behind him. No, this is Darius Stafford, brother. It's Darius, Darius Stafford gets the call. He goes left side and uh, maybe he got a guard. That's about it, Chris. Yeah, like I said before, the Cyclones rotating those running backs through there. And so far today, we haven't really seen a drop off with any of them. We've seen Fry, we've seen Stafford, uh, Jaden Williams as well. And I mean, they're all kind of contributing to this offense here and just waiting for one of these plays to break open. All right, second down and eight now from the 33. Demayo Hunter swings it near side. Receiver 30. This is Darius Stafford out of the backfield at the 40. And it'll be about a yard shy of a first down. And the Cyclones have had success early here on those swing passes. We saw Fry catch one before halftime, Stafford on that one. And you've got to think if, we, if they can get those guys into space there, maybe we see Clatterball pick up one here uh, in the middle of the field. But th that's going to add to some success here for the Cyclones. And you just mentioned Clatterball, and he uh, is in there, lined up uh, right side, tight end spot there. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. This is going to be a run all the way by DeMaio Hunter. He only needed a yard, had to get to the 41. He got out to about the 44. New set of downs for the Cyclones here as uh, we have 6-17 to play here in the third. And you mentioned Brett Clatterball on that right side there. Made a really good block there uh, with it looks like Jimmy Waters over on that right side just to clear that path for uh, DeMaio Hunter. But a great job there by the offensive line and Brett Clatterball at that tight end spot. Very good. All right. First and 10. Mayo Hunter has a little bit of time. Looks downfield. Can't find a receiver. Going to keep it. Gets away from one defender. Lowers his shoulder. Gets out to midfield. That'll be a six yard pickup by the Mayo Hunter. And will bring up second and four for the Cyclones. This broadcast brought to you in part by KM Lawn and Garden and Arborist Supplies. Now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. KM from grass to trees. They aim to please. That was another play there for the Cyclones where they were looking for Jaden Williams down the left side of the field and the Fox's pressure just broke it up. Back to DeMaio Hunter, keeps it all the way, breaks a tackle along the far sidelines. They force him out of bounds. It looks like near the 25, they're gonna mark it at about the 27. And that's a pickup of uh, 29 yards by DeMaio Hunter. Hunter, Chris. And this has got to feel good if you're the Cyclones offense so far. No points to start yet, but seeing success on the ground, multiple first downs has got to be something that you like to see here after getting a big stop mm -hmm. uh, from the from the Foxes offense on the last drive. Timeout called by King George with 521 to play here in the third, and the Fox is up 23 to nothing. We mentioned our timeout sponsor this year is UVA Community Credit Union, strengthening the financial health of our members and the Culpeper community, uvacreditunion.org. Also, of course, we are live, and our live sponsor is Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. Yeah, so this drive, Chris, Started from the Eastern View 31. They've got it now to the King George 27. It's been a nice little drive for the Cyclones. Able to pick up multiple first downs. Able to pick up the third and short. The big runs uh, by DeMaio Hunter. Just got to keep stringing those together and see if we can get them in the red zone here. First and 10 now from the 27. DeMaio Hunter going to throw. And he's got a receiver there at the 20 yard line. And it is uh, Eastern View's number nine. Xavier Carr. So, uh, Chris, it looks like the Cyclones have found a little bit more rhythm here on offense in this third. Yeah, that was a good route by Xavier Carr. Goes in, just gets to the spot that he knows that Hunter is going to deliver him the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, catches the ball and gets forward north and south to, to gain an extra yard or two. But, uh, like you said, a good drive putting together by the Cyclones here. Yeah, key drive here. And really, uh, I would say the necessity uh, exists that they really need to come away with some points here. All right, DeMaio Hunter going to keep it. And looking for a little crease to run through. Didn't really find much. He's going to be shy of a first down, but it'll bring up third down and short. Another good run there, and they're just picking right or left here with DeMaio Hunter. And wherever they see where they can get those blockers out in front, you saw Brent Clatterball get out there on that one again. 
uh, to get some positive yards. All right, third and one now for the Cyclones from the Foxes' 18-yard line. And DeMaio Hunter back there, and he's got uh, Eddie Holmes as well. Holmes is a blocker for DeMaio Hunter, who's tackled by the same jersey number. That's uh, King George's 15 is Charles Johnson. But uh, DeMaio Hunter got enough for a first down. They moved the sticks, new set of downs, and now they have it marked at the 16-yard line. So, again, uh, Chris uh, DeMaio Hunter able to help this team uh, sustain this drive. Yeah, and I would say normally for the Cyclones, the, the run game, at some point you've got to get to that passing game, get down 23, but they've seen success on the ground. DeMaio Hunter fakes it, keeps it straight ahead. He goes down to about the one-yard line. Well, the it's almost like they're just sort of uh, pinning their hopes primarily on DeMaio Hunter saying, you know, you've got your, uh, you've developed as a quarterback, you've got the athleticism, you're playing smart, go out there and see what you can do. And all of a sudden, he has helped lead this team down to the King George one yard line. Back to the run they go, and looks like Darius Stafford is in from one yard. So, touchdown Cyclones, Eastern View is on the scoreboard, Chris Frazier, uh, with 3.23 to go in this third quarter. And the Cyclones were able to go quick there, had the ball down at the one-yard line, got their offense ready, and that comes from coaching these situations, knowing that if you get down there on the one-yard line, hey, we're going to go with this play. We've got this running back, let's go. Uh, and it looks like the Cyclones will go for two here. And the Cyclones will set up, they're going to attempt the two-point Well, that's what they're setting up to do, and King George a little late getting their unit out there. They may be off sides. DeMaio Hunter will keep it, and DeMaio Hunter will be denied the two-point conversion. Yeah, a little surprise there, King George running that group on late, didn't call a timeout or anything, but just stopped short of the goal line with the Mayo Hunter. Well, they got their unit out there late, and I was surprised that someone was offside. Right. There was no penalty flag. The play was designed for DeMaio Hunter, it looked like, and he was about a yard shy of getting into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Our score, 23-6 to six in favor of King George, 3.23 to play. Here in this third quarter, this broadcast brought to you in part by Cash Imprints, from shirts to banners and everything in between. Imprint your message on the community with Cash Imprints, 317-1473. Also, uh, Found and Sons, more than a respected funeral home. They support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Found and Sons, 825-3530. All right, Chris Frazier. So, that's uh, certainly that drive, uh, 69 yards, capped by the one-yard touchdown run by Darius Stafford, uh, really uh, orchestrated uh, nicely by quarterback DeMaio Hunter. It's got to inject some life into this uh, Eastern View team. I mean, still a lot of football to play with 3.23 to play in the third quarter, and you're down by 17 points. And uh, here's the kick by Capolini. And getting under it at the 15-yard line is Ethan Chase. Here's Chase across the 30, 35. Tripped up, I think, Jaheim Fry will get credit for the tackle there. And he may have uh, saved his team uh, some uh, quite a few additional yards there. It looked like uh, Ethan Chase had a little bit of running room there. Yeah, Jaheim Fry was able to get his arm out there while he was being blocked and uh, trip up the ball carrier there. But... Like you were saying, the Cyclones piecing together a really good drive there. Still a three-score game, but can definitely make it interesting with some with uh, more of those drives like that. Hopefully, if you're the Cyclones, got to have a turnover, got to have something to really turn the mm -hmm. tides here and uh, and get your offense going again on some, on some quick offense. All right, Zach Ferguson and his offensive teammates take over on offense. We'll start it at the 39-yard line. Aiden Wolfolk back there. Man in motion, they hand it off to Wolfolk, but we've got a whistle and stoppage. And this is going to be a false start against uh, King George. It'll push him back five yards to the 34. It'll bring up first and 15. It looks like we had a jump on the offensive line there. The Cyclones were showing pressure there. So if we can just, if they can keep them into these uh, longer down in distances, it does take away an element of the offense for King George now. You still got to stay in front of those big, tall receivers uh, and keep those out of there. But do have a cornerback change here. Trayvon Brock out here on Chance Wiggins, which we've seen the opposite of, but haven't seen this matchup yet. All right. 
Back to the run. Wolfo straight ahead. Across the 34, out near the 40 to the 39. It's a five yard pickup. It brings up second and 10 from there. Three minutes and counting here in the third quarter. 23 6 King George. It was 23 to nothing at the half. The lone score in the third quarter has been the Eastern View touchdown, one yard out. Darius Stafford, the two point try failed. Second and 10. Fox is from the 39. Back to Wolfolk, the ball carrier. Right side, nothing doing. And now it looks like uh, Eastern View uh, playing some ins more inspired defense out there as uh, uh, James Branson was in on the tackle. Yeah, Br uh, Branson comes off the edge there and gets a hit in the backfield, able to stop him there. It looks like about a yard short for the another third and long. And the Cyclones in the second half here getting what they want. And we're seeing these corner, a little bit of the coaching matchups here. You see Trey Brock following Chance Wiggins, as well as Jason Spencer over here on uh, Makai White, but finding the matchups they like and sticking to them on defense. All right, here it is. We would expect to throw here from Zach Ferguson, but can't guarantee it. It is third and 11 from the 38. Wolf Oak ball carrier. They do stick to the ground. He's at the 40, got across it out to about the 42, but there's a penalty flag down. And is this in the area of a bad block? I thought that Ferguson looked for the pass, but they had, this was designed for a run all the way. Yeah, they had a little comeback play there, and it looked, it, it might be in the area of a hold. We've seen a few of those tonight, but it looks like we're getting a hold or another chop block on their offense. Okay, here comes the referee with the official call. Okay, so you're right, holding, it's declined. Forces fourth down. Yeah, the Cyclones get the ball back there, declining that penalty so they can get that offense a little bit quicker onto the field, but uh, we see Trey Brock again to field this punt. From uh, waiting the punt from Max Lipinski stands uh, inside the 30. Trey Brock back there at the Eastern View 30. Here's Lipinski's kick from the 33. This one is going to bounce down, take a cyclone roll, go out of bounds at the 37-yard line. So uh, only a 30-yard kick that time by Max Lipinski. And uh, very decent field position for Eastern View, uh, Chris. With the Cyclones trailing 23 to six and a minute 17 to play here in the third. Yeah, and outside of King George's second touchdown of the game, the field position has really been the telltale of, you know, if the offense is gonna score, or if they're gonna get down and get uh, points on the board. But the Cyclones here get another chance to uh, put some pressure on the Foxes if they can string together another offensive drive. All right, from the 37, now I'll go to the Cyclones. Play action. DeMaio Hunter gets away from the pressure. Turns up field, 45. Midfield makes a cut to the outside. He gets down to about the East, the King George 47-yard line. Well, that's a pickup of uh, 16 yards on the play by uh, DeMaio Hunter. And that's the kind of thing that you're not, you can't coach DeMaio Hunter to do that. He's being an athlete out there, makes a pump fake, gets a guy up in the air, and just uses his legs to get a first down. That's a great play by DeMaio Hunter. From the King George 47, back to the run, spinning his way and advancing forward to the 45 uh, was uh, Darius Stafford. And we've got an injured uh, cyclone down. Man, it's number 75 for Eastern View, Chris, and that is... Uh, Grayson Yates, offensive lineman, 5'11", 235-pound junior, number 75 there. Yeah, didn't see what happened there to Grayson Yates. Saw him kind of looking like he was trying to stumble back up, hoping hoping he's all right down there. Well, as they attend to, uh, the, uh, to Grayson Yates, we'll tell you that this broadcast is brought to you in part by Battlefield Automotive, uh, willing to take your trade and offer up to 104-yard line. And a minute two to play here in the third. DeMaio Hunter, quick strike, near side. Got a receiver, Trey Brock. And uh, slung down, shot of the 35-yard line by 
uh, Zach Ferguson, team's quarterback, who doubles as a defender here as well. And he flung him down, but Brock does pick up the first down. It is now, the ball is at the King George 36. Final 40 seconds now ticking off this third quarter clock. Yeah, Brock makes a really good play out there. Got to the first down marker, turned around. Demayo Hunter delivers a great ball to him, and Cyclones are able to keep stringing these first downs together. Here comes the pressure from King George. Eastern View picks it up. Demayo Hunter keeps it. Tackled shy of the 30. Pick up about four yards. We'll mark it at the 32. Second and six coming up. And we'll see if we'll get another playoff before this third a play off before they get this third quarter to expire. Final five seconds. They do get it off. Here's Tamayo Hunter feeling some pressure, reversing direction, and then sacked for a loss. It's a big one. And this tackle made by Corey King all the way back to the King George 45 yard line. That's a loss of 13 yards, and that's how that third quarter has ended. We'll take a break and come back for the fourth quarter with King George leading. 23 to 6. Keep it right here on the Culpeper Media Network. This broadcast is brought to you by the following community sponsors. Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718 7556. Battlefield Automotive, willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. Battlefield Automotive, 547-3673. CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. Hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center, 825-2200. Found and Son. More than a respected funeral home, they support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Found in Sons, 825-3530. From shirts to banners and everything in between, imprint your message on the community with cash imprints, 317-1473. K&M Lawn Garden and Arborist Supplies, now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. K&M, from grass to trees, they aim to please. 825-8371. All right, welcome back to our broadcast. Start of the fourth quarter. Eastern View on offense, looking at third and 19. DeMaio Hunter fakes it, keeps it. And uh, they're going to tackle him at about the line of scrimmage. That's it. Brings up a fourth and long. And... Uh, uh, fourth down and about uh, 18 yards to go. And the Eastern View lines up to go for it. DeMaio Hunter, Darius Stafford there on his right flank or right side. And I guess you go for it here, they do. Here's DeMaio Hunter, they need 19 yards. He slips a tackle. He's in the open field, 40, 35, 30, and they force him out of bounds near the 25 yard line. And DeMaio Hunter, you know, I think he did most of that on his own, don't you? Yeah, I mean, he stepped up, made a great play to the right side there. And hard to see where the ball is spotted over there. Mm -hmm. You know, I had him with the first down, but uh, they have not they have not uh, ruled, have they? Not Look how close this is. And it, from our angle, looks possibly short. Mm -hmm. But, and then, I mean, you got to credit to Meyer Hunter running to the stick side there, trying to get exactly to a spot. And if, if he's short by, uh, then the other saying short. Yep. And that's tough. Must have stepped out before that dive. He, You know, it was only short about a half a yard. I thought he had it. Instead, now they turn it over to the uh, Foxes on downs, and King George will take over uh, at his own 25. And the Cyclones are at least able to push King George back a little bit, not give him the ball around midfield there. So, All right, Zach Ferguson, the quarterback. Quick throw here near side to the receiver, Makai White. Out across the 30 and uh, lunging forward to about the 33. We'll bring up second and three there. We'll love, you know, we're a minute into this fourth quarter and King George up by 17 points. 
23 to 6 our score. I was mentioning earlier that uh, now our score at the intermission was 23 to nothing. And in that first half, Chris, we mentioned that Zach Ferguson was uh, part of the uh, all three uh, touchdowns. He threw two touchdown passes and he ran for a touchdown. Max Lipinski was three for three from point after touchdowns and uh, King George had a safety. And here's a quick throw near side. Chance Wiggins makes a diving catch at the 40 and a first down for King George. And we mentioned that King George had the safety in the first half. That made it 23-0. Then here in the third, in the third quarter, uh, Eastern be able to get on the scoreboard with a, a good looking drive. I think it was 69 yards. Capped by a one yard touchdown run by Darius Stafford. Two point try failed. Now we're into the fourth quarter and that gets us up to date on our score or our, in our scoring. Uh, have I left out anything? No, had the three possessions by the Cyclones there in the third quarter, which just scored on one of them. But if we can get three possessions here for them in the fourth quarter, we might be able, they might be able to make something happen. Wolfolk, the ball carrier, Brett uh, Clatterball, the tackle for Eastern View, held him to a two-yard pickup. And Wolfolk had some room in front of him there, so it's a great job by Clatterball getting through the line and then making that tackle because, like I said, Wolfolk had some room in front of him there, so it's a great job by him. Well, let me say this. I mean, you know, we certainly expect Brett Clatterball to shine on both sides of the football. He's done so defensively, but it doesn't seem like he's been uh, part of the offensive mix uh, in this game. Not so much where you're calling his name, but he has made a couple good blocks mm -hmm. on runs for DeMaio Hunter and things like that. And right. He has been targeted a few times, but, I mean, him him and uh, a lot of those unsung heroes on the offensive line there, he gets through on that one. Well. The ball carrier was Aiden Wolfolk, and he fooled no one, especially Eddie Holmes, who tackled him for a loss back at the 30-yard line. That's a loss of 12 yards on the play. And that's a huge play for the Cyclones. Eddie Holmes makes a great tackle to get him back there at third and long, and the Cyclones, again, put, put him in that third and long situation. Last time we saw Eddie Holmes bat one down, mm -hmm. as you'd expect the Foxes to go into the air again here. Well, and, you know, you had singled out Eddie Holmes uh, for a couple of plays he made in that first half. Uh, for Eastern View. Yeah, him and Jason Spencer, they've been uh, the two of the two of the names we've called a lot outside of Walker and Clatterball, but they've made some great plays in the secondary and uh, getting into the backfield for the Cyclones today. King George looks at a third and 14 from its own 35. Zach Ferguson. Well, he had time. Now the pressure comes. He's looking for a little running room, and he won't find it. In fact, we'll drop him at the 30. That was Brett Clatterball in the tackle. They drop him at the 31 for a loss of four yards. And fourth down coming up, and that means uh, Max Lipinski and the punting team for King George. So the defense does its job again, Chris, and uh, they're going to get the ball back to Eastern View. But the clock uh, could be a factor, of course. We're in the fourth quarter. We're under the eight-minute mark. Yeah, the defense has really stepped up here. Multiple Cyclones in the backfield there. Braden Walker was back there. Josh Perez was working back there, and Clatterball was able to finish it off. But if you're the Cyclones, you got to score quick here and then get a turnover, get some, like, that instant offense we were talking about. All right, on fourth down, here's Lipinski. His punt from the 25. This ball is going to bounce and not take a King George roll. They're going to down it at the 50-yard line. So 25-yard punt by Max Lipinski, and uh, Eastern View outstanding field position at midfield when it sends its offense back onto the field. Yeah, getting a great uh, field position here. Wouldn't be shocked to see the Cyclones try and get a big play here on first down and get the, get the drive going, whether that's through the ground on the ground with DeMaio Hunter or try and get one of these receivers open with uh, Trey Burke, Trey Brock, or uh, Xavier Carr. From the from midfield, Eastern View sets up on offense. They trail by 17 points, 7.27 to play. DeMaio Hunter looks for running room, breaks the tackle, lowers his shoulder, gets inside the King George 45. This broadcast brought to you in part by Battlefield Automotive, willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value along with a free trade appraisal. Battlefield Automotive, 540-547-3673. 708 clock ticking, fourth quarter. It is second down and five for the Cyclones. They have it at the Foxes 45. DeMaio Hunter got time, airing it out downfield. This one caught, and it's caught by Darius Stafford. 
from 45 yards out. Well, Chris uh, Frazier, touchdown Cyclones, and I think if you're DeMaio Hunter and Darius Stafford, I don't think you draw it up any better than that. Not at all. You even had Jaheim Fry in there as well. Didn't know who was going to catch it, but Darius Stafford makes one heck of a catch on a great throw by DeMaio Hunter. Dropped it right into the bread box with its Cyclones touchdown, and now things get a little bit interesting here. Yeah, we can battle the clock, battle the scoring. Right, and they go for the point after here with Braden Gapplini. I mean, if he gets it's a 10-point game, still need two scores, but not two touchdowns necessarily. The, the holder is none other than DeMaio Hunter. Snap, the hold, Capolini's kick is good. So 23-13, 10-point lead for King George, but a little different ball game going on now with 6.54 to play. Yeah, and so far in the second half, the Cyclones have been able to step up and really make to, or turn things around here. And, I mean, like you said, down 10, but this has got to be a big confidence boost for the Cyclones, which with six, uh, about a little under seven minutes left, anything can happen, like you said. Absolutely. This broadcast brought to you in part by CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. Hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center. Also, K&M Lawn and Garden and Arborist Supplies, now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. K&M, from grass to trees, they aim to please. All right, 6.54 to play in this one, and 23-13, uh, we mentioned 10-point game. So, a long touchdown pass to Darius Stafford and the point after by Capolini. Uh, injects some more life into this Eastern View team, and, and, and obviously a lot can happen in uh, about seven minutes to play. And King George here setting up, thinking that onside kick could possibly be happening, but and it does. Oh, here it is. They did it quickly. I think they caught him napping, and the Eastern View has recovered it. That is number 18 for Eastern View, Chris Frazier. Aiden Grimsley. There you go. Called his name a couple times, but well, how about the design of that uh, lineup on the uh, onside's kick? I think they caught uh, King George napping there. They did. We saw it earlier when King George went for it. They kind of went for it, backed up, and then kicked it. But what a great kick there by Braden Capolini! Put it where no one was. They had everybody up yeah. front, packed in that line, kind of waiting for that Pat McAfee Super Bowl kick, and uh, didn't get it. Eastern view. King George 45 yard line. Demayo Hunter will carry the ball. He'll be held to about two yards. I think you pointed out uh, very astutely that Brayden Capolini, uh, you know, it's uh, the old concept of not necessarily pace, but placement. Absolutely. Got it 10 yards and was able to just put it there so Aiden Grimsley could get it right before the sideline, exactly where you want to put it. That's just great special teams by the Cyclones. All right. So, now from the 43-yard line, it's second and eight for Eastern View. And DeMaio Hunter looking to pass. Got a receiver out there. It is Jaden Williams from the 40, and then a couple yards after the catch. Yeah, Hunter able to find Williams there. Had two guys going deep there, clear, cleared out the space for Williams. Uh, to make it a third and short here for the Cyclones. And you're obviously in four down territory here, but you got right. you have two downs to get two and a half yards. At the 37 now of King George, Eastern View has it third and two. All right, here's Hunter, hand off. Stafford shakes the first defender, but uh, that defender slowed him up enough for his teammates to come up and support and stop. Uh, the ball carrier shot of a first down, in fact, Actually lost a yard. It's going to bring up fourth and three. And you've got to think the ball here is going to be at the Mayo Hunter's hands where he can pass it, he can run it, make a play with his legs to uh, to extend this Cyclones drive. We need three yards to do so. The Mayo Hunter going to keep it. There he goes. They give chase. He's going to be a little bit short, it looks like, again, of a first down. And Chance Wiggins... Uh, made the tackle for King George. He didn't get it, uh, Chris. No, it's twice now. It's just been that last wow. little bit of a yard that they haven't been able to get. Yeah, he 
He had to get to the uh, 35. And he got to the 36, a yard short. All right. Turnover on downs back to King George. Now again, now the clock starts to become a factor. You have 5.33 to play. Eastern View's trailing by 10 points, 23 to 13. Bad news is King George offense back onto the field. To its own 35. Zach Ferguson hands off Wolfolk out across the 40 to about the 41. Yeah, and this is where if you're the Cyclones, you've got to start getting a guy in there for the tackle, reaching for that ball, trying to get trying to get a ball on the ground here to create a little bit of a turnover and see if you can score quickly and pull off another onside kick from Clatter, Capolini. Yeah, Clatter Ball and uh, James Branson combined for that last one. Ball at the 41. Picked up six. It's second and four. And now King George in a position where it can certainly take its time and work the clock because time is it you know time is its friend and they certainly if they can sustain a sort of a drive here they can really put uh, Eastern at a great disadvantage as uh, the ball carrier Aiden Wolfolk again carries for King George and a nominal pickup perhaps a yard brings up a third and four 430 to play in the fourth clock is running and we've seen King George on the last couple third downs try to go to the air here, try to get something out on the outside. The Cyclones can uh, break up one of these passes and stop the clock and save one of their second half timeouts. <laughs> That'd be very be beneficial for them. Stop the clock here and get it back, try and score quickly. Right, and Eastern View has all three of its timeouts. King George has two. <laughs> clock running 4.05 to play, fourth quarter action. Here is third and four for King George. Ferguson's going to keep it. Ferguson will have a King George first down. Had to get to the 46, and that's about where they're spotting this one. Just a little uh, uh, past that, and they've moved the sticks now. Big first down for King George in this broadcast, brought to you in part by Cash Imprints, from shirts to banners and everything in between. Imprint your message on the community with Cash Imprints, 317-1473. Also found in Sons. More than respected funeral home, they support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Founding Sons, 825-3530. Now from the 47-yard line, first and 10, Foxes back to the run. This is Wolfolk. Makes the cut, and he's tackled uh, as he just uh, passed midfield. And let's check the tackle. That's uh, Braden Walker making it for the Cyclones. Yeah, Braden Walker making a good tackle there. He's able to get away from Clatterball there in the backfield, diving at his feet. But again, the Cyclones just on the wrong side of that first down marker on that run by Ferguson. See if we if they can get a stop here with three minutes left uh, to make a last ditch effort at scoring. We've got three minutes and got three timeouts. They trail by 10 points. But King George here looks at a second and six now from the Eastern View 49. So as you pointed out, as Wolfolk, the ball carrier, goes straight ahead. It's going to be denied the 45. He'll get out to the 46. He picked up three. And now it looks like uh, Eastern View has called a timeout. We mentioned our timeout sponsor is uh, UVA Community Credit Union, strengthening the financial health of our members and the Culpeper community. UVACreditUnion.org. Also, we're live, and our live sponsor is Able Heating and Air answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air at 718-7556. 2.41 to play here with the timeout. 23 to 13 in favor of King George. And uh, looks like we've got a uh, third down and three coming up for the Foxes. The ball is spotted at the Eastern View 46. King George keeping that heavy dose of the run game here with Aiden Woolfork on the ground, but the Cyclones can kind of block up that middle there and try to get a uh, try to get a stop here on fourth down. Yeah, or they third down, third yeah, down. they certainly need to stop here. And they have two timeouts remaining. All right, Zach Ferguson, signal caller, handing off again. Wolfo dives forward. He should have enough 
for another King George first down as uh, Eastern views uh, Grayson Yates. Oh, I make that, I'm, my mistake, number 73. Uh, you do have a 73, don't you? I do not. Okay. I think I saw a 73 for yeah. Eastern View. You see him out there, Chris? I Made do. Tackle. Swapping jerseys on us. All right. Well, the big thing here is that it's fourth and less than a yard for King George to keep the football and deny Eastern View uh, possession as the minutes continue to tick down. We are now just under two minutes to play. Clock moving here in this fourth quarter, and Eastern View desperate to get that football back. Uh, time is certainly working against this uh, Eastern View defense. You wonder if King George is just going to take delay a game here or call a timeout. It looks like their head coach is down there by the referee. Certainly about clock management, and you pointed it out nicely, Chris. King George has opted to take a timeout. They have, uh, the Foxes have one remaining. Eastern View has two, a minute 40 to play. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, if you're King, uh, Eastern View, you need a couple of big plays, turnover, that sort of thing. And uh, King George, really, uh, you know, when you think about it, you go back to this game, it was 23 to nothing, the intermission. And now here in the second half, Eastern View has outscored King George 13 to nothing, but still, uh, ten, they're still looking at a 10 point deficit. Yeah, the game plan really hasn't seemed to have changed much for King George. I mean, they, they've still been trying to target those receivers. They've still been running the ball just like they were in the first half. You get in the fourth quarter, they're trying to run it out a little bit, but definitely not for lack of scoring. The Cyclones defense has really stepped up and uh, done a great job on the outside here and kind of made it a uh, middle, middle of the field game, which the Cyclones can win that game. All right, after the timeout, King George looks at fourth and a yard to keep possession. Zach Ferguson keeps it. And uh, he got first down yardage and more as he got inside the Eastern View 40 yard line uh, where Eastern View's uh, Josh Perez makes the tackle, but uh, they move the sticks. New set of first, uh, new set of downs rather for King George, which has it at the Eastern View 39 yard line. And the clock continuing continuing to run a minute 20 and counting here in the fourth and it just looks like Chris Eastern View is going to quickly just run out of time yeah and King George uh, has enough uh, they, they don't have enough time on the clock to run through this whole setting uh, Eastern, Eastern View only has two timeouts so they can't even stop the clock for the full full amount here they hand off to Wolfolk Wolfolk reverses direction and he picks up a block from Chance Wiggins and then goes out of bounds uh, just shy of the Eastern View 25 yard line. So reversing direction uh, and then picking up that block, that's 14 yards for uh, Wolfolk and another King George first down. You definitely don't want to go out of bounds there if you're Wolfolk, but picking up a first down almost mathematically ends it for the Cyclones here. Uh, under a minute to play. Clock stop, 53 seconds showing. New set of downs for King George, and it's just a matter of going through the procedures here to uh, absorb this uh, remaining clock. Ball now at the 26. Zach Ferguson is number 10. Hand off straight ahead to the 25. Not looking for yardage, you're looking for ball control and working the clock is King George. And, uh, you know, even if Eastern View got it back at this point, Chris, it would probably be the old uh, adage of too much, too little, too late. Yeah, and I don't even know if King George, depending on when they got that play clock started, if they'll even have to take a snap here, they might just be able to run it out. 20, 23 seconds and counting now. King George obviously taking his time, and uh, this next play could be the last play of the game. Yep, Zach Ferguson handed off. Wolf folks straight ahead inside the 20. Final seconds ticking off. And this one's official. It's in the books. This is a win for King George. 
uh, by the score of 23 to 13. This was a what we talked about being a Battlefield District showdown, Chris. Uh, how good is Eastern View? It depends on how they do against King George. How good is the, uh, King George? Well, let's see how they do against Eastern View. And so tonight uh, really wasn't a tale of two halves. It's just interesting to note that all of King George's points are scored in the first half, and all of Eastern View's were scored in the second. Yeah, I think it's a confidence thing for the Cyclones in the second half. I mean, not not so much into moral victories or anything like that, but you look at a team that was down 23 to nothing, was able to come out, have yeah. 13 points scored, and two extremely close fourth downs with right. the Ohio Hunter. I mean, one of those goes their way. That's a totally yeah. different game if they're able to score. Absolutely. Well said. And, you know, I know it sounds corny, but when people say it's a game of inches, that's an exact exactly what you're talking about he came up short a couple times uh you know and it's just you know it's the way it is but uh well i've enjoyed calling the game with you tonight chris i think you did an outstanding job and uh we look forward to seeing you again soon um and i think that's probably going to do it uh, tonight for us here at king george high school so once again our, our final score foxes 23 cyclones 13 for johnny uh chris and nicole i'm mark o'connell saying thanks for watching and supporting Cyclones football here on the Culpeper Media Network. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, the Cyclones will wrap up the regular season next week, home to Cortland. Until then, I'm not sure where, we're, where we will be. Until then, so long, and have a great week. This broadcast is brought to you by the following community sponsors. Able Heating and Air, answering any and all questions you may have about your HVAC system. There's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. Battlefield Automotive, willing to take your trade and offer up to 125% of Kelly Blue Book fair trade value, along with a free trade appraisal. Battlefield Automotive, 547-3673. CFC Farm and Home Center, supplying your lawn and garden, pet and farm needs since 1932. Hometown pricing and outstanding service at CFC Farm and Home Center, 825-2200. Found and Son, more than a respected funeral home, they support youth at all levels so they can become tomorrow's leaders. Found and Sons, 825-3530. From shirts to banners and everything in between, imprint your message on the community with cash imprints, 317-1473. K&M Lawn, Garden, and Arborist Supplies, now located directly across Highway 29 from Eastern View High School. K&M, from grass to trees, they aim to please. 825-8371.